fighting very soon. But yeah, guys. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys caught it, but in the uh, broadcast, Slim won knockout the night. What's good, brother? It's kind of how. What's good, Anthony? Saw these amazing fights. Woo. I had all my fights right besides one. Which one? Uh, Fousey. Um, I actually predicted a lot of the fights that were going to happen. Uh, I knew that uh, Salt Poppy was going to win. I knew Dean Dean was going to win. Uh, I just didn't think he was going to knock him out that quick. Uh, we all knew KSI was. You know what's so funny and sad? People criticize that- me fighting Ryan Taylor to a draw, even though I clearly want that. But they won't criticize KSI fighting this guy. And at least Ryan Taylor would have threw fu- punches at KSI in this fight. And, it, and it's sad how things are brought up differently in my situation. But a lot of people definitely do a lot of shit talking, but don't want to fight professionally. But then that being said, congratulations to all the fighters. Um, big upset, slim versus fighting, t- knocking out temper. I already knew Ooh. that Slim was going to knock out Temper. I already knew that. Temper is not experienced enough for Slim. And that was that. Yeah, man. It's it, it's funny, man. Uh, so, again, of all the three, so far it's been three YouTube boxing events. Uh, earlier, first one was Showstar. Second one was Cray Clash. And, um, and, then it's, and, and, and you was in one, but it was a much smaller um, with you and Ron Taylor, but I'm just gonna talk about the big one. They had King Pam, but that's compared to these. Those are smaller events. Um, so th- did you see Kirk Lush? I didn't see that one, but I've heard a lot of it. You know. Also, I want to okay. bring up one more thing. Happy Punch. Like, Go I, ahead. I, I personally didn't like the way that Joe Willer was definitely disrespecting Mams, who's pretty much the promoter of the, the, the whole fight. I didn't like that. That was very disrespectful and mm-hmm. very corny and unprofessional on Joe Weller's side, especially for them to allow him to come on there and commentate and have him disrespect the man who put on the show. That's a slap mm-hmm. in the face, bro. Like, you don't deserve a fight. You don't deserve to be on the Misfits card or any fight card the way your unprofessionalism was shown. And that's a I, big I agree, problem man. with these with these influencers. They feel they can disrespect people who put on these shows, and they need to understand this is a business, not a circus. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I, I agree. The Joe Weather thing is just bonkers because, okay, we you know, for people listening, uh, if you don't, don't mind, at all the fighters who was on the car, like, like Saw Poppy, Slam, Adam, like, yo, because I want to hear some input from them, winners and losers. But the one thing we'll say about Joe Weller, man, the last time he fought was 2018. That was January 2018. And they were trying to start a fight with KSI. And he said, oh, it's fighting in the parking lot. Like, between 2018, or let's just say KSI versus Logan won, which is 2018 to now, he could have fought again. And if you watch the end, you say, oh, I want to fight. No, I don't want to fight. And I'm like, like, make up your mind, man. Do you want to fight or don't you? And I, th- and I think that's what makes me mad because at first he was like, oh, I don't want the drama. I don't want the BS. I'm like, all right, we'll go to Craig Clash. Because he only had one fight. And that was years ago. So it's not like he had that much experience. And clearly he's not in- into that. So I don't know w- with whether, man. But yeah, him trying to start a fight with KSI 24 hours before before his fight. Anthony, you know if any fighter try to fight any main event boxer or main event UFC fighters, that guy will not be allowed in the arena the next day. So, so Willis shouldn't have been in the in arena, you know, doing his job for being the, pro, the broadcaster. Try to start a fight with, with the main event guy. No, it's just it just shows it, it just shows a lot about his character, you know. And it's funny because uh, you know me and Mams, we mm-hmm. actually you know resolved our issues. Mams, as I got to know Mams, Mams is cool as fuck with me, bro. Like, we're cool now. You know, I'm not going to get the details of what's going on next, but we're cool. Gotcha. And it's funny because Joe Weller would want to fight KSI, 
but don't want to fight me if I called him out. And it's like, why would I fight you? You're a pro. I'm like, okay, but you want to fight KSI. You know, a lot of these people need to understand. And influence of boxing, and all you guys, everybody who's listening to this right now, and influence of boxing, there's no politics. Professional boxing and boxers, if you saw Chris Eubank Jr., he was told you guys himself, hey, in professional boxing, there are politics, there are promotion, there are bidding wars. Influencer boxing, there's none of that. It's who has more following, less fight. What promotion? Yeah. Yeah. That is the biggest thing. So when you get guys like Joe Weller who talks the big game but doesn't want to back it up, it just brings your level of maturity a lot more de- further down than what it actually is. So a lot of guys... I get a lot of shit talking from people all the time. Box me, fight me, but it doesn't bother me. It's what are you doing at that moment? Are you yeah. fighting or not? And kind of like you explain the politics. Uh, I think you can, we can agree that Hasim Rahman Jr. probably ain't fun on a Showtime or PPC card in the future. He burned that bridge. Because he was going not only with Jay Paul, but with Stephen uh, Azanosa, right, right, pronounce his name, the guy, the exec of Showtime. And he then him going back and forth. I'm like, well, you burnt your bridge. So Kelly says so. Steven Espinosa, he's the yeah. CEO of Showtime. Yeah. Yeah, yes. And so he was going back and forth. And I was like, Well, you burnt your bridge there. Thankfully, you know, you know, he's filing next miss the misfits card, but the agreement is there's a lot of politics. But you know, Anthony, the people's here and for everybody's in here, if you don't mind, share this point in the timeline, put on your IG and at the fighters, all the fighters who was here. I know Slim and Dean was on IG Live and shout out to them. And and you know what, Anthony? Since you're here, let's go right into it. What's your breakdown of Dina Gray versus Evil Hero? Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna say this. Evil came out. Evil came out hard in the paint. He came out swinging. He actually caught Dean with a couple punches too. You mm-hmm. know, I just feel like he just Evil Hero was just sloppy. It kind of reminded me of Romero versus Davis fight. You know, where Romero looked long and good, but he just got caught, and he, even I got caught. But, you know, I've told people all the time, I have no issues with Dean. I think Dean's actually a really cool guy, cool fucking kid. Good talent, great skills, but I think he tends to bite more than he chews. Dean has good footwork, good speed, and good charisma in the ring. And I'm not taking none of that from him. He's a good fighter. But as far as him trying to fight me professionally, there's no way, you know, I would definitely fight him, but I'm not, he's 133 pounds. The lowest I fought was 45. And that was like five years ago. There's no way he's going to want to fight me professionally in 10 ounce gloves because now I'm in ultimate shape. But enough about me. Let's talk about more about Dean and Eva. Dean showed a lot of poise and confidence and his skill set in that ring for the first time showcasing his skills in front of millions of people. And I applaud Dean to the fullest. Yeah, I train with him. And I would call Dean what you say. Dean is a lovable piece of shit. But he's my (laughs) lovable piece of shit. And I want you guys to know that. Just because I don't mean Dean fight does not mean I won't back him up. If somebody was trying to jump him, I will jump in and defend Dean. Just because I mean him, I have our issues. I will protect him because he trains at the same gym gym with me and he's there. So this is just the way I think. But Dean and Evil Eye was a good fight. Breaking down Evil Eye, I felt like Evil Eye had an advantage at power. And we saw that at, at an early point. It was just Dean caught him and pretty much discombobulated him the whole fight. That one shot from Dean with that, that straight right, it really took a toll of the whole fight, and that would change it. It only takes one fight to change the whole fight. I agreed. When I made my prediction, I said the only way Evil Hero can win is if the stage and the bright lights is too much for Dean. And clearly it was. Dean, shine. Uh, he has to work on his backflips, that's for sure. Because, boy, one wrong turn and shit could have got ugly. But thankfully, he didn't. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, man. I think Dean looked really good. It's funny, he was so low on a card that people just naturally forgot about him. But that's the bad thing about prelims. Like, you know, you have to do stuff to make people remember you. Uh, but yeah, Dean did great. Uh, Evil Hero, I would like to see him fight again. And again, uh, for people who don't know, Dean is, he basically did the Kimbo slice 
background. He fought in backyards. He fought in parking lots. He fought at beach, you know, with just random people. And like he didn't just run from people. He had some gloves like, hey, who wants to fight? So it really was a, you know, a great platform to, you know, show. Like, like I put it this way, even Hero had a more experience fighting on a big stage. However, Dean was more seasoned. So, again, credit to Evie Hero because it's hard to find an opponent for Dean, especially after this. Um, an opponent who I would like to see Dean fight is Lil Cray Cray. We look Cray Cray or Lil Cray Cray. Uh, if you follow me on Fight Lounge on Twitter and IG, I'm going to show you a, a fight of Lil Cray Cray. I think that would be a great fight. Uh, Wally Sharks, the guy who fought Adam Sala, and in my opinion, won, but it was a draw. I think those are two great fights that Dean could fight. You know, absolutely. You know, a lot of people would love to see Dean fight again. You know, Dean does have a uh, star quality. I just think he needs to train a little bit more because for him to get hit that much from a guy who's not as popular and experienced as Dean on that circuit is going to cause problems because then what happens if Dean runs into to another boxer who actually has technique with power? Uh Uh-oh, you're going to be in trouble. So I feel Dean should be in the gym more. Um, He will become a successful boxer. Uh, He has all the qualities. And I'm not just saying this because, like I said, I don't have nothing against Dean. Do I like him? Fuck no, I don't like his ass. But do I have to live with him? Yeah, I got to live with him. He's my lovable piece of shit. But Dean, Dean is going to get better. Fousey is going to get better, you know, just because he had a stumble, you know, but kudos to fucking Deji. Deji improved. Personally, Deji has a better promising boxing career than his brother KSI. But well, then, well, look, yeah. it, I mean, let's be honest. Deji had a better opponent this night, which is crazy. Expecting a pro boxer father. Let's let's speak on, on a little bit on that, man. The quote unquote pro boxer was the most important embarrassing part of this YouTube boxing event. That fighter was embarrassing. The referee wasn't... I don't know why he didn't end the match. Clearly, the dude didn't want to fight. And like True said, oh, he's here for a paycheck. I don't know what was up with the referee. I don't know what was up with that... Um, w- w- with the fighter, man. But, yeah, that that pro fighter, pro boss, whatever. Oh, oh yeah. my God. What an event. <laughs> <laughs> King, first thing, man, you did amazing. You, True, and Todd, you guys were great on Oh, uh, dude, I was running out of steam. I wasn't even sure towards the like last KSI fight if I <laughs> even was making sense. <laughs> at one point, he was good though. Man. At one point, I'm like, I was trying to make the point that Deji and KSI like leveled up, and I go, "These people have leveled up," and I'm like, "Fuck, did I just say these people? Like, what the f- <laughs> bro?" <laughs> I wanted to put it on Akeem. Like, I want to say thank you, bro, because you were speaking some real language out there commentating. You wasn't holding back. and You were speaking the truth. And it had people thinking like, wow, really? No, for real. You had really, what you were saying out there was really good shit and great commentating. And we need more of that energy more in the future. Anthony, I appreciate that. I'm like, I'm the expert in the entertainment shit, man. I'm the expert in the storylines and the shit talking and stuff. When it comes to fighting, I'm not the expert. That's why you need the the commentator that we had and then true Jordy and stuff. But I like to hype shit up, man. I'm a hype man. And they had me <laughs> they had me run it on no sleep and it wasn't their fault. It was my fault. But just, you know, the, the time schedule, right? Being over here in England, I was running on no sleep and I was just trying to maintain that energy. And I, hopefully I delivered. Bro, you you did uh, you did above and beyond for us. You, like, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Without you commentating, man, the zone would have been dead. People would have been like, "Who the fuck are these commentators?" It's not that at all exciting. But you is what you you were kind of like our Jr. and our Jim Ross of WWE when we watched TV. You were those guys, and you made the whole fight commentating entertaining you had us laughing you had us like oh shit you did that for us fans who watched who ordered it and watched it and that's why i'm thanking you personally because you made it fun for all of us to watch the show 
Oh my God. Thank you so much, Anthony. I, I, I still don't even know, like you, this is the first person like telling me how I did. Right. I just got back to the hotel. <laughs> But we're looking from the bare knuckle with you and Fousey to this one, big improvement, a massive improvement. I was like, man, King's holding his down. Like Utah and True, y'all guys did great together, man. Uh, do, do you want to be a commentary again? Because you said, you know, you was running low on steam. Do you want to be more behind and try to be the promoter? So would you do this again, commentating? You know, the whole time that I was commentating, I was just – Checking on my girl, looking for my girl and stuff. I miss my girl. It's like, man, I wish we could just watch this together. Uh, and she was she was doing the same thing. Uh, but no, I love commentating. I, I would definitely commentate again. I, it's it's fun. It's it's the role that I wanted. You know, I wanted to be able to deliver to the audience the backstories and the insight and you know why each fight is important. Because even if yeah. you're an influencer boxing fan. You might be a fan of like half the card and not know the other people, you know? Yep. Yep. Again, you, True, and Todd brought something to the table. Todd is strictly funny. Some people don't know it's Anthony does. Todd Wrestling started in wrestling. That's how I know him. And then he translated to boxing. And he even got some heat from the, from the boxing purists. And they was like, what's this guy doing here? But Todd's been in boxing for years. Todd has an amazing voice on the mic. He sounds so good and professional. I couldn't hear True Jordy the entire night and i i just i couldn't hear him through my headphones i could barely barely make out what true jordy was saying so it was hard for me to interact with true jordy but all in all um i, I thought like it was an amazing uh, amazing event and you know i was thinking about the upsets and uh, I slim was, versus, talk, talk about slim versus temper Let's yeah about it. i was i was i was I was thinking to myself, I'm like, no, Temper's got this. And everyone else had told me, like, Temper's got this. And I said in the green, I think it was in the green room, or maybe I said it on camera. I don't know. I go, if there is an upset tonight, it's going to be this match, and Slim's going to walk away with a win. And I don't know if I said that privately or on camera, but that was that's what I thought. Slim, four, four wins, four knockouts. He, this knockout was brutal. Maybe people thought Slim might win by points, but that was a brutal knockout. Oh my God! How good is Salt Poppy? How yes. insane is Skull? Uh, is Salt Poppy? Like it's just, it's like, it's unreal. Same thing with Dean, bro. Dean, <laughs> I think I said this in the commentary. This will be the first time someone becomes a meme, but actually won in influence <laughs> boxing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on the real though, man, like, didn't get watch out, man, because you know things for everything went right, but boy, it was like the wrong turn. It could that could have ended badly. Yeah, Dean, Dean did great, even though he's going to be a meme. Dean did great. Salt Poppy is always fun to watch. You know, that actually be a good fight would be King Kenny versus Salt Poppy. A lot of people might not like that, but a lot of people will want to see what can Salt Poppy do with a guy as King Kenny's height. King. Dude, we gotta we gotta throw somebody at Slim. I want Slim to have an insane opportunity next. You know what Fuzzy well, said to me? Fuzzy pulled me aside. I probably shouldn't even say this, but I don't care. Like if you're in the Happy Punch, uh, you know, <laughs> Twitter spaces, you're gonna get some some private exclusive. details. But, Fu but Fuzzy pulls me aside as soon as I land here in London, and he goes, "Listen." We got to put Slim on the squad. I'm like, ah, we'll see what happens with, with, with this fight, right? Uh, I should have so – I talked to Slim at least like six times before his fight. I should have closed that deal right away. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, man, barely than, than ever. Slim has – again, I've been watching Slim's journey when it was him versus Fousey. And since then, people overlooked Slim. They dissed him. This is the night that Slim became a superstar. Co-main event, his walkout was iconic. You know, he was. Oh my run. god, dude! <laughs> he did so much stuff right. The shit talk before the match, like in the press conference, like he did so much stuff right. Like Slim, you know, I used to say this on Drumler years ago. I used to be like, dude, everyone's afraid of Slim. Somebody fight Slim. And then, you know, other people start coming up and I'm just like, ah, whatever, you know. Uh, and now I'm right back at it. Like, Slim deserves an amazing opportunity. Look, listen, I do want to go into King Kenny and Sensei. I know you got your thoughts. But Slim, isn't Slim what you look for in a boxer? He's entertaining. 
He promotes the fight, and most importantly, he gets the job done. Yeah, um, we're 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 going to be talking to Slim. We're we're we're. I think we need <laughs> Slim on the squad. Yeah, a- a- absolutely, man. All right, King, King Kenny versus Face Sensei. Your thoughts? You know, during that fight, because it was like you know, because nobody got knocked out or whatever during that fight, I'm clearly thinking the entire time that Face Sensei won. But I can't really express that because he's under happy punch. You know what I mean? Like, I can't really just go out there and, and go to bat for um, for Sensei uh, the way the other guys did. So, you know, when they had the same conclusion that I had in my head, then I could agree with them and whatnot. I just, I didn't want it to be, you know, because, again, I'm not the most knowledgeable person when it comes to the actual boxing aspect of this. I didn't want it to be a situation where I was calling the fight wrong and I was just being biased. So I let True Jordy and, and the other commentator, I'm, I keep forgetting his name, uh, but he uh, did Todd. 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 Todd, Todd yeah. I, I let them say it for me. Can, can I speak on thoughts? that? Oh, yeah. yeah uh, you go. Uh, phase one, all four rounds. Uh, I was yelling, profuse, just pissed off when Phase, when Sensei caught him with that right hand and the oh referee just comes and stops it. Oh I'm like, God. yo, this is a pro match. You don't do a standing eight count unless you're going into amateurs. That's an amateur move by that ref. I felt like Sensei would have had the first round knockout. I'm actually Next. cool with Kenny, though, actually. Me and Kenny are cool. But I felt like Sensei won all four rounds. He controlled it. He he smothered him. He landed more shots, more accurate shots, especially to the body. Kenny just didn't show enough for me to actually win. And fortunately, you know, Sensei lost, but I felt that Sensei dominated all four rounds. Even Kenny, he tweeted out. He was like, well, I thought it was a draw. So even well, let me, didn't win. Let, let me say this again, all right? It's not just unfair to Sensei. It is unfair to Kenny because now Kenny, once again, after another match, has to fucking deal with everybody call him a cheater and everyone, you lost, bro. And, like, it, it's not fair to either one of them. And, obviously, people are going to look to try to overturn this one just like the last one. I'm sitting in there, and I'm, like, I'm putting conspiracies in my head. Like, what is going on? Who's paying judges? Like, what is – this is happening Two King Kenny fights in a row against face people. Like, what is actually going down? And, you know, you can't blame me for having those conspiracies based on the circumstances, but what the fuck? King, this fight was clearer than Kenny's loss to Temper. Literally, the first round was a 10 8. When you do the stand 8, that's a 10 round, that's 10 8 on Macri. And now, could now, now again, this is what you, Todd, and True was talking about. Since it got criticism, and I have a killer instinct. And it's one thing that Dana White from USC always says, do not leave in the hands of the judges. Since they hurt King in the first round, he could in the second, third. Now, you know, I, I kind of wish since he was here, I understand he's tired, he's talking to people. But, like, I want to know why he didn't, like, oh, I heard in the first round, let me go right. For example, for KSI. When KSI hurt swarms in the pro boxer, I would take five, round one. As soon as the second round start, KSI went immediately. I kind of wish Sensei did that, knowing that, hey, the judges wasn't going to be in his favor. But, again, this was more clear. Now, the bigger question, and this is regarding Heck Punch, Sensei was talking about retirement. Do you think we see King Kenny face Sensei too? Anthony or King? Um, I think uh, – I don't know. I was literally texting Slim. That's how fast I'm trying to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I... I don't really see them fighting again, uh, but it clear it, it's clearly shown that hey, if you want a proper fight, don't fight King Kenny in the UK. That's yeah. just going to show. Don't fight him in the UK because just know what to expect. Fighting, fight him on a mutual ground, Dubai or the US. Just not uh, the UK, especially when look, you're when you're not a UK guy. I gotta say this. All right, you know what bothers me about all this is that King Kenny is fucking good he right. is good he is so fucking good and he deserves all the fucking respect in the world for even facing face sensei and he Agreed. he is also a victim Absolutely. of this dumb shit he's also a victim because he has to deal with oh you didn't really win that and fucking all that other shit 
And it's like, oh, it's so frustrating. If they would have just announced Sensei the winner, we would have done the fucking rematch because it was a great fight. I know Sensei would have done it. I know King County would have done it. And now it's this bullshit. Like, ugh, we need better I, I like how King Kenny is handling it, though, King. I like how he's handling it. Handling it. He's... He's not in the moment. He's having fun with it, and he's embracing it, and he's not letting it get to him. I like that part of Kenny because he's a stand-up guy, and he shows that he's compassionate, and he loves the sport. Yeah, and um, I, I got to say for Temper, I mean, Temper was literally training for Blueface and yep. then had to switch things up last minute. Um, and I feel like Temper would have been way better prepared if he was planning um, on fighting Slim. Now, you guys have to know that during Temper versus Kenny One, Slim was already studying Temper. Slim's been oh, studying yeah. Temper this entire time. And that's what I was trying to convey uh, in commentating today, is that these two were talking shit back and forth for months and months and months and months and months. And months. Like, before there was even a, a, a Temper versus King Kenny, before, these two were fucking popping off. Before there was a show story. Slim and Timber was supposed to fight on Social Knockout 2. So, like, yeah, they, they were supposed to fight years ago. So, so you're right, King. I think what happened was, and again, I would love to hear from Temper. I know he'll probably say it in his YouTube or whatever. I wonder if he underestimates Slim. Because Slim has been the most disrespected YouTube boxer, and tonight he earned people respect. So I would like to know if Temper underestimates Slim a little bit. Yeah, we 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 just it, it, it when he came out with the intro music, I said to myself, I go, if this guy walks away with a W, <laughs> he's we're putting him in happy punch, right? Because that's what we want. We want sell tickets, entertain, and fucking win, you know. And he won. And look, dude, I've known Temper for a decade. Dear friend, all right, longer than a decade, probably 15 years. I fucking love him. I'm team temper all the way, but Slim is just a better boxer. He just is. I, I felt that too. Um, I even said it in the breakdown. I said, when people ask me about the fight between who will win between Slim and temper, I picked Slim. And the reason why I picked Slim because he had a little bit more fighting experience. But I said, if temper had one more fight in, before this, fight with Slim, I would have gave it to Temper, edging him out just because he would have been more experienced. But, you know, Temper put on a hell of a lot show. He has improved since the Kenny fight, and he looked like a seasoned vet out there. Fortunately, he got caught. Everybody does. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Temper fight again, and I'm looking forward to Slim signing with Happy Punch because that's going to be a great addition to your guy's family. And is going to make a lot of noise out there in the YouTube influencer boxing out there in the world. So, you know, congratulations, King. I'm excited for you guys' potential signing. And I'm excited to see what Slim has to do when it comes to boxing and also temper. I, I really want to talk about the man that stole the show through all the press conferences leading up to this event. And that is Sam Hyde. Sam Hyde was banned he was banned from creator clash like so many people were not trying to give this dude a chance he had a loyal loyal fan base he was pushed in the darkness he was banned on a couple social media platforms and i just felt like the shit was so unfair we threw him in happy punch and we just hoped for the best and <laughs> sam's not Sam's not young. Sam's like almost 40 years old, <laughs> you know, huge, huge guy. And to come out and, and beat a guy like Thompson, I was just so impressed and so happy and so fucking proud. I agree. I mean, Sam Hive, who don't know, well, clearly if you see, he's a heavyweight. That's the big boy division. Heavyweights can go one of two ways. It can end in the first round as a banger or it can drag. And I think this fight kind of dragged. Um, but it was still, you know, a very entertaining fight. Uh, you know, and Sam High went out the, the winner. I think he just won it more. Shout out to Thompson. Uh, he was spending that same punch over and over. But I think Sam High won this fight more. If you could help me out, Fight Lounge, me and yeah. True Jordy were frustrated because we couldn't, we didn't have internet access. We kept mm -hmm. act, asking for Wi Fi. We would try them, they wouldn't work. So we weren't on Twitter during any of this. Can you? Give me a rundown of what Twitter looked like. Who trended? Like, what were people talking about? 
um, stuff like that. Cause I, yeah. I missed the Twitter experience of these fights, which is so important. Uh, so well, if you want, and this isn't a shameless plug, but if you go on my Twitter fight lounge, I re, you know, people know I retweet everything that's related to the fight day. So I have tons of it. So you can go in there. But the number one person who was just surprised was Saw Poppy. That knockout just stole the show. Dean was very impressive. Um, so My girlfriend's in the background. She's like, uh huh. Like, dude, Salt Poppy, dude, that was insane. Yeah. Yeah. Andy, he, he, he... I feel so bad for Andy Worski because he didn't have a chance to do anything. It was just lights off instantly. I mean, at one point I do, but another thing like this, this shows the people, you know, who like all the YouTubers and influencers, like, this is real. You know, they're saying you don't play boxing and Andy show. Like, you have to be prepared. Andy, again, Saw Poppy is more skilled and prepared. But, like, I guarantee you Andy did not see that coming. And you have to. Like, Andy can tell you being in MMA, whatever, it's it's war. You're trying to take the other person's head off. I think yeah, Saw so Poppy. I, go for it. My bad. I was just going to say, I know there's going to be some criticism that, like, some of our guys didn't fight worthy opponents, especially with the Saw Poppy versus Andy Worski. But let me explain to everyone here. We tried so hard, and I think Fight Lounge is pre, uh, privy to a lot of this. Okay, uh, my bad, Keen. Let's just mute everybody, even though I didn't click it. My, my apologies. Oh, okay. Um, so we good now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you were just saying like how difficult it was to find points for Dean or even Saw Poppy. Yeah, dude, it was like Mission Impossible. All right, so. We couldn't get any opponents for Salt Poppy. There were people on the card tonight that had an opportunity to fight Salt Poppy higher up on the card that said no. I'm not going to out them. And Salt Poppy didn't say no to anyone. It's just everyone was saying no to him. When I asked Salt Poppy who he wanted to fight, I, I sent him a text message. I go, what fight do you want us to try to set up for you? All right. He sent me a text message of every single influencer boxer that ever fucking existed. Dude, <laughs> Logan Paul, Jake Paul, KSI, Deji, everyone was on there. Faye Sensei was on there. All right. And the list of who he wants to fight. So it was just such a battle to try to find an opponent for him. And I really wish that Salt Poppy... Um, was fighting for a title tonight because then someone would have to fight him. Yeah, I agree. But see, here's the thing about, you know, Saw Poppy and Slim. Now these guys, their stock rose. So now you might see people like, man, if I want hire on a car, I'm, I'm going to have to fight these guys because Saw Poppy, Saw Poppy was the very first fight on Showstar and he was still in a low car for this one. And now Slim, the co-main vendor, Saw Poppy. So now... Don't Saw Poppy is a problem. Yeah, so don't be shocked within the next two weeks if Slim gets called out. Oh, speaking of which, Gib, Gib, Gib said, I fought the winner of Slim versus Temper. Boom, that's opponent for Slim. If if Gib beats Austin Broom, which I think so, but boom, Gib versus Slim. I absolutely love that. Um, <laughs> dude, just what a, I'm still trying to unwind from this. Like, this was, this was crazy. I felt, I felt kind of bad for KSI because, you know, look, KSI didn't choose two easy opponents. KSI had no options. <laughs> you know, yeah. he was just trying to save the event. Um, and and I, I feel bad that, like, the thunder was taken away from him. But at the same time, KSI said, this is not about me. This is about influencer boxing and creating a card for everyone. And as far as me goes, this is just the warm-up. This is exercise. You know, I, this is to, to grease my wheels and get back in the ring. Um uh, and prepare for the ultimate war of Jake Paul. Okay, hey, can, we I, have... can, can I speak on the Poppy, Salt Poppy one thing? Yeah, yeah. I, he has a lot of potential. I think if Salt Poppy really want to take this further, he's going to have to come down on weight. Fighting at 185 is great, but I think he'll be great at 168. He's just going to have to come down if he wants actually a good fight. He can definitely do it. He actually had to put on some pounds. He came real. He came down because we had a different opponent in mind, and then that fell out. So then he had to actually put on weight. Um, oh, for, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, listen, 
it, you, uh, what's your thoughts on the whole event? Any, you yeah. know, um, any fight you want to particularly talk about? Um, no, nah, I actually enjoyed uh, most of the fights. Um, you know, like I said, they're uh, like Keem said, they're influencers. So you can't really rate them as boxers. You got to just rate them for who they are and, and, and the fact that they have heart uh, getting in there. Uh, Saul Poppy, shout out to him, man. He That boy is a puncher. Um, you can see he really enjoys fighting. So, you know, and then of course my man Slim, my Muslim brother Slim, um, you know, these guys are making a show. So shout out to KSI for actually put, putting on the show and, um, and putting guys who really want to fight on, you know, dude. So your nephew is a networker. Okay. Hasim has been everywhere. And I was asking him if you were here too. Uh, he has been everywhere. He's been talking to everyone. <laughs> He's so smart. He, he knows you. what to do. He knows how to listen, man. One thing that's my nephew called me because KSI is the one who helped me start, um, you know, the fact that I became uh, a small influencer myself, um, you know, so shout out to him. But uh, my nephew called me before he was over. He was literally FaceTiming with me while he was on the plane. And I kept telling him, I said, listen, talk to everybody. Make sure you make sure you're in everybody's space and make sure that everybody knows who you are. So, um, you know, shout out to him for, for doing a fantastic job. Um, just, you know, being out there and, and, and making a face for himself, making a name for himself as well. I, I hope he has a he comes back with a bigger UK following than anybody. Yeah, and for people who, you know, in case don't know, yeah, uh, Hasim Rahman Jr. will be fighting Vitor Belfort, a UFC legend. That will be on the next Misfits card. And Komei Vang will be Jay Swingler. So, again, it's YouTube boxing season, man. We got this event. And then in a couple of weeks, you're going to have Austin versus Gibb if it isn't delayed again. But this it, it isn't. Next week, Jake said, I'm announcing his opponent. Jake's going to fight. Got another I need to have Tommy Ferry on. Uh, I, need, I need Tommy Ferry on that undercard. That's okay. Uh, okay, I'm glad you you said it. Anthony and Muslim, did KSI do enough today to convince you that he could potentially beat Tommy Fury? No, I don't think he did enough. That so you have to give KSI. You got to give props to KSI. He's a tough fighter. The man is a um. He's a he's he would be a tough opponent, but I don't think he has the experience to beat Tommy right now. Um, you know, Tommy is a is a actual fighter. And that's what he does. So you have to give it to Tommy as well. Like, you know, Tommy's a tough fight. I don't think KSI is ready for that. I think KSI should um, should really pick a, a, a like a mid-opponent before he jumps up and fights uh, Tommy Ferry. Anthony. I'm biased on that. Um, I don't think Tommy Ferry deserves to fight KSI due to him backing out um, and not showing up. But I also feel like you know, being biased, KSI should fight me because I fought Tommy Ferry and I am a better boxer than a lot of the fighters KSI fight. But speaking for t- towards Tommy Ferry, no, Tommy Ferry, he he has a lot to prove before he even takes that big money fight. He, I think he's avoiding Jake. And if it, if there were two fighters who KSI should fight, would either be me or Tyron Woodley. We both fought on the big stages before. We know how to handle social media. And I don't really see Tommy Fury really interacting with KSI promoting the fight. If I can agree with that. If you're fighting K, thank you. If you're fighting KSI, you need to be able to promote the fight. You need to be able to be marketable. Tommy is not marketable. He relies on his brother Tyson to market the fight and, and his father to promote the fight. So as far as fighting wise, yeah, it makes sense. But as money and marketing wise, are you going to get an investment back having Tommy? No, I don't think. So when you saw the last fight with Tommy Fury and Jake Paul, I was telling everybody already, hey, they're not going to fight. Tommy is not marketable. He doesn't promote well. And look what happened. He pulls out. So is it a good fight? Yes, but is it marketable? No. I I agree with you on that one. Um, as far as you know, um, I definitely think KSI should fight someone who already fought Tommy Ferry, um, in order to make sure that he can gauge where he is. And uh, I don't know about as far as the Tommy Ferry uh, not being able to sell because I think if it's a big enough card, he'll he'll be able to sell. You saw what happened um, for the last fight. Well, you know, well, they can well, sell. Look, I don't think anyone cares about KSI versus Tommy Fury. Like, dude, that I, I agree. I, 
I don't think anyone gives a flying fuck. The <laughs> fight, the fight is Andrew Tate versus KSI. That is the fight. Like, so look, you saying the fight is not? Uh, I can see Andrew Tate versus KSI, but what about uh, KSI versus Jake? Oh yeah, that's way bigger. That's even bigger than Tate. But Tate is big. Tate yeah. is big. Tate right versus right Tate now. is massive. But but Tate's Tate. a kickboxer. Tate is not a boxer. He's straight kicking. Tate spent more time on kicking than boxing. I, I, I don't have any you 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 you, you spent haven't you spent more time kicking and kicking and boxing? You know no, I'm a box I'm a boxer wrestler, sorry. <laughs> so I, but oh. I'm saying he, Tate hey, hasn't but, fought in years professionally. And I don't you know, I wouldn't take that serious of him fighting fighting Tate. But I'm not going to rule it out of him fighting tape as a possible rollout. Once I'm a puncher, talking, always a puncher. I'm talking from the internet side. I'm talking from like, like views and pay per views and like people getting excited and everybody talking about it just because of how big Andrew Tate has gotten recently. And look, there was Absolutely. talks be- there was talks behind the scenes that Jake and Andrew Tate were going to possibly fight each other. And I think the reason why we've seen the tweet from KSI saying, thank God Andrew Tate got banned. I don't think it was a joke. I think it was to bait Andrew Tate towards him. Yeah, because there was some good terms. I remember weeks ago, uh, you know, for I, I forget what the contest was. But, yeah, there was some good terms. And then, boom, one tweet turned around. Uh, but, but, again, the, the thing was, did, can, did KSI show enough that he could possibly beat a Tommy or a, you know, Tate? I think that's the question right now because, again, Swarms, he went in, he fought, he looked terrible. He looked better than a pro boxer. And again, this is on KSI. He was originally supposed to fight as Wasabi, and that shit hit, hit the fan like every other YouTube boxer event this year. So, but do, do you think KSI should fight a Austin Bruin if he was to fight Gibb? Do you think KSI, KSI wants to fight Slim? He's a he'll fight Salt Poppy. Do you think he needs to fight another YouTuber before he levels up to a Tommy or even Jake? I think he needs to fight somebody like Slim B before he even challenge somebody like Anthony. Um, I think he's been out the game for too long, and I think he needs to kind of, you know, freshen up. Even as pro boxers, you know, if we don't fight too long or we have too long of a layoff, we don't just go in, unless you're just a purist, we don't just go in and say, I'm going to fight the biggest name. I'm. We say, okay, I need a tune-up fight, and – I don't think these guys that he just fought were tune-up fights. I think it was, yeah, okay, you know, I'm putting my toe back in the water. But now, okay, let's build this up a little bit more. Uh, for You know, speaking on Keem's part, um, you know, got to build the fight up as far as social media-wise. So I think he can fight somebody like Slim, somebody like uh, Austin, and then uh, Anthony, and then uh, Jake or Andrew Tate. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I think, I think, oh, go, go ahead, Anthony. I just feel like, uh, honestly, personally, I feel like KSI needs about a year or two, a year, a year or two before he even considers fighting Jake. Because a lot of people was dissecting his his fight with KSI with Swarm and Pineda, and you look at that as like the way you're punching, the way you're coming in carelessly. Jake is gonna eat him up with counter punches alive. We've already seen what T Wood can do, and. If he would have fought T Wood on that last minute notice, T Wood would have kicked his ass. And I'm not here trying to promote T Wood or or Jake Paul. I'm just speaking of what I saw of him fighting Swarms and Pineda as a boxing fan and as an actual fighter. Yeah, I think that's what you know. I know a lot of people say, "Oh, Wooly ain't this, Wooly ain't that." Uh, Wooly was better than those two people combined. Like it wasn't even close. But again, case I did was supposed to do. He went there one. This was the case I show. This was case I's homecoming. So I don't mind the. I mean, I do money points, but I don't. Cause he did fight twice. That's yeah, he he put on the show for sure. He um he did what he was supposed to do. Yeah, a- absolutely. Um, all right, guys, King Live. I mean, we come back. I'm gonna let you guys in. I'm gonna let a couple fans in. Um, uh, a crazy, crazy night. And once once I add you, you know, we, we can chat, man. Um, I still can't get over. Um, hold on a second. I had the wrong person. Um, I I still can't believe that um that Slim beat Temper. I can I, I still can't. I can. 
you got man, y'all gotta look at boxing for what it is. Even though it's 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 YouTubers, you guys gotta look at these guys' tempo and like temperament and things like that. Slim was calm even with the weigh in. He's like, yeah, he's a little hyped up, but for the most part, he's calm. Temper is mad. He's fight. He fights angry, and you're you're always gonna lose when you fight angry. You're always gonna lose when you don't fight with a clear head. The thing with Slim is, um, what surprised me because going into this match, I always thought it was gonna be close, but I always thought that the two weeks because Slim kept saying no strength and conditioning, I was worried for Slim because I was like. Oh, strength and conditioning, your gas tank may be lower than it usually is. But he was supposed to fight before that. So the boy is Yeah, in- yeah. Slim Slim was well conditioned and well. He was well conditioned. He was he was well he conditioned was supposed to fight before. Exactly. And he knew that Blueface was gonna pull out. Cause once that fight off up at the uh, the one in Los Angeles got canceled. Slim knew what's up for them to already promote because I've even already reached out to Mams and everybody on the Temper Fight Lounge. Oh, Temper, a uh, blue face pulled out. What's his weight class? I think I hit up Fight Lounge and they said, Oh, where your weight at? I'm here. They already said that's within five minutes. Oh, we already well, have the appointment. appointment. Well, well, I gotta say, blue face didn't pull out, he was taken off. Well, right, right, right. But I'm saying. Off that other card, card, this card, I offered to put my name in the hat for temper. They already hit me up and said we got somebody already in the, for a replacement. And this was five minutes after Blueface was announced off the card. Anthony, you too dangerous for these for these YouTubers, bro. Man, hey, but the disrespect I get, bro, from all these exhibitions. But this is the these- I get disrespected too. But you, it's a it's a it's a big difference when you. When you have you have to you got to take the disrespect, right? You you might right. say, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna beat this dude up." They're gonna talk, but for you, they're really not gonna take the fight. You're too dangerous of a fighter in order for them to take. They're YouTube fighters. They're they're fighters. You got to give them their props for getting in the ring, but they're YouTube fighters. You're not a YouTube fighter, and so when it comes to actual being actually being a dangerous opponent. It's going to be a completely different ball game. Yeah, they're going to talk some trash. Yeah, they're going to say you're a bum. Jake Paul said I was a, I, I he beat me up in sparring. I don't like. Yeah, all right, cool. I might have responded, but I'm not going to really play too much into that because I know I'm never going to get that chance. I'm too dangerous for Jake. So you, you that's what you got to remember. Yeah, they're going to play the antics. They're going to say a bunch of stuff because your name is out there. You're you're a reputable name, but you're not going to get that chance because you're too dangerous, bro. Absolutely, you're speaking facts, and and I respect that. Thank you for pointing that out and allowing everybody who's in this room the space to hear that. You know, yeah, I might be five six, but go ahead, let's put on them ten ounce gloves professionally, and let's see what's really going on. No, I gotta give and, you props. You know, I, I I saw when you fought Tommy Fury. I want to fight Tommy Fury, but I, he's never going to want to fight me. He, he would die. But I saw when you fought Tommy Fury. I know you got heart. I know you got, you know, you you're relentless when it comes to the ring. These 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 YouTubers don't got what it takes to actually fight somebody and stay composed the whole time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me just jump in here, right? Because I think this is crazy disrespectful to the scene that you're trying to get involved in to just trash all of them. As bullshit off the bat, you guys, uh, you know, you're here, you're talking about it, but you're you're moving a bit disrespectful to to the scene. In in Muslim's defense, though, guy, when you have guys like Jake Paul who are saying, "Oh, I whooped his ass" it, on a public press conference, when Muslim, as a professional boxer with his pedigree, came out to Puerto Rico to help Jake Paul prepare for someone like Tommy Fury in good faith. And then you have someone like Jake Paul say, yeah, fuck that. Oh, I whooped Muslim Kaysen's ass when we all know that isn't true. We all know mm-hmm. Jake spars at a thousand miles per hour. We all know that Jake, Jake Paul takes spars as actual amateur fights and counts them as wins. And we all know that the professionals take sparring as sparring, as helping someone out. You saw it clearly in the Hasim Rahman Jr. spar. So when you have guys like Jake Paul dissing on boxers, you must you, you like these guys must take offense. Like Jake Paul comes out and mm. says, "Oh, I'm gonna be Canelo Alvarez." It's not it's not a a, a show. He actually thinks that. And no, he doesn't. Nah, nah. 
I'm sorry, you can't <laughs> run like you can't run saying those things and like not have some like Jay Paul is that crazy. Like, but let, let me done. let me say, professional boxers talk trash all the time. That doesn't make every professional boxer a trash talker. Right? There's there's YouTubers who would talk trash, but that doesn't make every single YouTuber a trash talker. There are some guys that have got proper respect for this scene. There's uh, professionals that don't have full respect for the scene. Look at Pineda tonight. You know, he's <laughs> um, awful. But, he, yeah. he, he was embarrassing. Pineda again, pissed I, me off. I got to say, the pro boxer was the most embarrassing thing. And again, they ain't case as far as his job is going there and get him out of there. Hey, he did. did what he was supposed to do. It, yeah, it don't matter yeah. if it was a pro boxer or whatever. If if KSI, if I went in there and KSI did that to me, he did what he was supposed to do. But Christian, you have to remember that you, me and Anthony, as pro fighters, we are giving these guys their props. I'm ne You never heard me Absolutely. Talk or diss uh, KSI or Jake Paul. You never heard me diss them. All I said was, it, I'm, I, I speak the truth when it comes to certain things. If they're YouTube fighters, Jake Paul, I got to give it to him. He has been a pro. He's been in, in camps. He does his thing. It's KSI still a, a, a YouTube fighter. It's, it's no harm in saying that he's still a YouTube fighter. He got to get back mm -hmm. up to his pedigree to where he can say, all right, I am a pro boxer. But you're not just gonna come in this in this game and and in the pro leagues and say, oh yeah, I do this and I do that. That's not gonna happen, especially when it comes to how big you are as a as a influencer and how big your platform is. Hey, Mushi, yeah. and, and and let me speak on that. And a lot of people don't understand this. You know, you don't really see high level boxers like Chris Eubanks and all them, all Tyson and uh, Deontay shit talking on J on uh, Jake Paul. Because they say, well, Jake Paul ain't fought nobody. Well, you can say the same damn thing about every fucking boxer who started off in their career fighting. When yep. they go to 10-0 and 0 fighting guys who are 0-30, 1-15. and yep. 15. Every boxer did it. We hey, all I haven't this. fought anybody yet. Well, I haven't well, fought well, anybody yet. I fought. I, I fought to my to my um, to my uh, to what I was supposed to do, and I did what I was supposed to do. Same thing with KSI. But right. I haven't fought anybody yet either. So when it comes to, but I have I have been in there with so many world champions, and I've been in there, you know, to get, I get my I I can I can talk and 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 back up what i'm saying because i've been in there with world champions who try to knock me out and they can't so that's why you know there's a there's a there's a big difference but safe to say i haven't fought anybody either to compared to who i'm supposed to fight you talking about uh people like breedish you talking about people like uh uh Lawrence O'Coley. those are somebodies they're they're world champions I'm not. I'm not anybody yet. Yes, I'm ten and zero. I'm ranked number five in the world. I'm ranked number, uh, uh, I think forty five in the. I'm ranked number forty five in the world, and I'm ranked number five in the country. But I still haven't done anything yet. So yeah, I I agree with you on that one. Kirsten. Yeah, no, I know. I understand. Uh, I I get that. I, I respect pro boxers. I'm one of the guys that's been watching boxing 25 years but also knows the youtube scene like the back of my hand but the, the one thing that i would say is that why are you guys here if if you're saying that there's a huge difference between youtube boxing and pro boxing and you're putting yourself in the latter category then why why are you guys here why are you getting involved because publicity in sells because exactly. well, well, hey, well, 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 let me, well, push on it. let me get on, them, let me get them well, real well, quick uh, okay anthony let me get one thing Muslim was in train camp with Kesa. He was in train camp with Gibbs. He was in train mm -hmm. camp with Jake. That was his role, just to get these guys better. Anthony wants to fight these guys. Muslim wants to fight Tony Fury. So I think that's what confused. Muslim doesn't want to fight any these YouTubers. Anthony does. I don't want to so, fight. I don't want to fight KSI, and I don't want to fight Jake Paul. It, it gives me no. It gives me nothing to say that I beat Jake Paul. It gives me nothing to say that I beat KSI. Tommy Ferry, yeah, it might say something. But as far as the talking, trash, and things like that, me and Anthony stay relevant. This is why we talk trash. This is why we're on social media. Because yeah. because the our fans and the fact that we are notarized with 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 YouTubers and notarized with other by every some other people, it gives us a platform so that way we can make more money. Like, don't get it twisted. 
if the platform deleted today, I'm still going to be the Muslim boxer and I'm still going to be 10 and no. It might be different when somebody else uh, gets their platform deleted. But for the most part, we got to play the game and we play the game well. We are influencers as well as professional boxers because that's what sells. I made $500 my first fight. KSI made over a million dollars his first fight. Why would I not take his lead and learn what he did in order to make the same amount of money as him. Yeah, I respect that. I respect that. No, ab- absolutely. Mushin is, is definitely definitely correct. You know, boxers are influencers. If you if when you put that in the terms, we are influencers. Boxers, in, when you look at Muhammad Ali, influenced generational of people. Mike Tyson influenced everybody. Just because you ain't, just because you don't have the title influencer on social media, boxers have been influencers since the time of boxing has come the whole thing with jake paul i never wanted to get into boxing jake paul brought me into it with the tommy fury thing so i was one of those guys who just happened to fall into the influence about boxing category when i want to fight ksi hell yeah that's life-changing money right there that's five that is life-changing that's money like, that's a million dollars it's like you're telling me that it's okay. It's it's bad for me to not call out KSI, but it's okay for Conor McGregor to fight Floyd Mayweather and get a hundred million dollars. Come on, man! You telling me I can't feed my family? Facts. Big facts. Anthony's not saying anything. Everybody, we're in this sport for the money, for the fame, for the for the for the platform, right? We're in it for the for the for the notoriety. And when you have somebody like KSI or Jake Paul or something like that, that's the reason why we go to their camps. That's the reason why it's not for the money and it's not for anything else. It's for the because they have a platform where the, where the world can see us. That's exposure. What it's the exposure because if we don't get it, then we're not going to be anybody. If you look up Rigandial, Gorlamo Rigandial, he was a Cuban Olympian. The man has probably one of the most is the most talented fighter of all time, probably in that category. And guess what? He didn't make a lot of money in the sport because he wasn't marketable. So you have to be marketable, especially in this day and age, because Floyd Mayweather changed the entire system. And so because of that, we have to be influencers slash pro boxers. So when you come into uh, so when you see me or Anthony tweeting about KSI or tweeting about these guys, it's because of the relevancy that they bring. Absolutely. Any guy who says I'm just I'm not doing this for a, for the money, they're a fucking lie. Hear me out, guys. They're stupid. Guy, they're stupid. I'm not getting punched in my face for free by Mike Tyson. And Hell nobody no. likes getting punched in the face. Hey, anybody who says money is the root of all evil, evil they're bullshit because they're broke. Only broke people say that money's the root of all evil. Money will change your life. But you got to do it at a sense where it makes sense for your life. You want generational wealth. That's all I'm telling people. Moose is speaking facts. We here because we want to we want to provide for our families and we want to have generational wealth. I don't want to be the guy who's just known as Tommy Fury. The guy who fought Tommy Fury, who are the sparring partner of Jake Paul, I want to be that guy. Like, yo, this ant was an influencer guy who changed the game. Facts and me being Muslim, you know that that says a lot. You know, I have to, I have to not only just be. I don't want to just be a world champion. I want to be the brother who who stayed. You know, who kept to his morals. And make sure I'm known for that because I know there are younger Muslim kids who are looking at me and 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 wanting to be into the sport. And I don't want them to sell their souls for a couple dollars. So that's why I do what I do, and that's why I, you know, I I, I stick to who I am. But right. if you say you ain't in it for the money, then you might as well leave because like you you gonna you gonna take brain damage, bro. We you know how long, you know how hard it is to go through camp. I'm going through camp right now. I have to fight uh, for a USBU title uh, ma- uh, um, on the 24th, September 24th. I'm putting my body through hell. You really think I would do this for free? Y'all must be tripping. Hey, they don't understand that we got to cut between 30 to 40 pounds, and that can kill us during the weight cut. They don't understand that one punch can kill your can kill you in the, in the fight, and your whole family go through years of burden. They don't understand that, Mushin. You know, they don't really understand that. The casual don't understand that. So, 
for us to use our social media platform to help teach them what we go through step by step. That's why there's YouTube, there's TikToks and everything. Look, a lot of people is going to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody's going to have their opinion. Yes, you have your opinion. It's freedom of speech. But I want you guys at least do what we do for a living, cut weight, go to a six-month training camp, and then come back and tell us that shit was easy. And fight r- real boxers who t- are trying to knock your head off. What case I just fought a real boxer? Say it again. That's the case I just fought a pro boxer. Yeah, yes, I fought a pro boxer, but not to the talent of someone's expectation. When you're here trying to call out Jake Paul or something, and we see what Jake Paul can actually do to an ex-UFC fighter who who fights in the streets of knowing if Jake Paul fight Tyron Woolley in the streets, we already know what's going to happen. Hey, happy well, punches. You can you can become a pro boxer next month. So it's it's really not about, oh, he's a pro boxer. The pro, pro boxing... Being a pro boxer don't mean nothing. It's about what you do in the sport. Just like being an influencer, any anybody can be like, "Oh, I'm an influencer," and then we look at your profile and it's like nobody follow you. Nobody, nobody, you you have no influence over anybody. It's about what you're doing, and it's about how you do it. So as far as the pro boxer, everything like that, yeah, you got to give KSI his props for fighting the pro pro boxer, but you also got to look at the pro boxer. It wasn't but the really, separ- anybody. The can separation. Fight. The yeah. separation is coming from the professional level, not the YouTube level. Say it again. The separation of professional and YouTube boxing is coming very much from the professional level rather than the YouTube level. But KSI is a pro, technically. He's a professional boxer, technically. So it's a pro against a pro. It's not a YouTuber against a pro. He's still he KSI, if you want to go there, then it's KSI who's a professional. He has a box rack. He's one and so it's on, not on a YouTube box boxing. Rack. Say it again. So now it's not YouTube boxing anymore. We, we don't we don't call it YouTube. Once you get your pro license and you step in that boxing ring professionally under the pro license boxing federation under their guidance, you are now considered a pro boxer. But so Christian, just- the reason why he's getting this black backlash because he went to the pros and then went back down to YouTube boxing, and we understand that now he's saying that he did it for the YouTube boxers. That's fine, but. As far as him, that's like me stepping down from pro boxing and going to fight uh, Salt Poppy or something like that and saying, oh, yeah, I went and fought Salt Poppy. I beat up Salt Poppy. That's not. Who went to the pros? KSI. Say it again. Who went to the pros? KSI. KSI is a professional boxer. KSI is a professional boxer. But so is the people that he's fighting. Yeah, but there's a level. Now, right, it's like saying, no, it's no, like no, saying no, no, Tyson Fury is fighting me Bro. and Tyson Fury fighting Deontay Wilder. Totally different skill set levels. Logan, Logan is technically a professional boxer, and Logan was a better better match than that Pineda guy. Like, that Absolutely. Pineda guy was the most frustrating. Like Logan's I, I, a tough fight. That boy is strong, and he's big. Absolutely. Logan, and, and for most of you guys don't know, I'm giving you guys a private snip pick. Logan dropped my ass and, and sparred. Hey, 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 don't say that. No. Hey, 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 it's all fun. I'll joke about it all the time. But a lot of people don't understand. Funny thing is, no one heard of this Pineda. This guy was handpicked from somewhere, especially from Mexico. You could have choose millions of pro boxers in the UK, but you chose to decide to pick a, a specific boxer. But all boxers are handpicked at this level. You said it yourself. Well, let's be fair here. It's not KSI who picked him. It's the matchmaker who picked him. Let's be fair to KSI. And let's also be fair to the fact that this, again, was not supposed to be his original opponent. Yeah. And Alex Wasabi, because I feel KSI like... KSI signed on on it. He, he didn't have to choose to fight him. He could have said, no, I don't want to fight him. Give me a better opponent. Well, hey, he could have fought here, me. What, he could have fought me on a two weeks notice. Here's what I'm gonna say: KSI is gonna see that he knows those points was easy. Even True, even True was like, "Yeah, whoever this match mentioned for KSI spot should be fired." So KSI knows, but this was the KSI show. It was his comeback. Everybody left happy. He had two wins. Even his said his next opponent will be tougher. So I think we can just sit back. We can speculate. It's gonna be Slim. It's gonna be Saw Poppy. It's gonna be Tate. It's gonna be Tommy Fury. So his next fight is most definitely going to be a much, much more tougher opponent. 
and I can't wait like. for it. I, I, I'm excited to see what he does. It's entertainment. But Christian, I know that's your country, man, and I know you got to back him up, so I understand. But like we said before, it's it's it, there's a difference between going to the pros and then coming back down. It wasn't a pro fight. It was a it was a it was an exhibition match, and you know, um, for us, and I'm talking just on the pro side. For us, it's not really like uh, it's okay. And it's okay. and one thing we'll say, Kristen, these two guys, you know, Anthony and Wilson, they are YouTube boxing, and they've been around it. There are some pro boxers who just turn their nose at this still. They don't get Jake no. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Logan, yeah. you know, so like, yeah. so like, you know, so you know, shout out to Wilson and and Anthony because like in the term from their thank experience. You, but no, I, re- I respect that big time. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, but again, let's speculate. Who do you guys think Case I will fight next, and who do you want him to fight next in January? I want to see Slim or Anthony. I I think he should fight if Austin like pulls a miracle out the bag and beats Skip. If, I if that should. event, if that event still happens. Yeah, if it happens and Austin pulls a miracle and beats Skip somehow, because I think Gibbs steamrolls him. I think it should be Austin. Like, I so think him even... Austin, you're not going nowhere. You're just pretty much having the same step. Well, he's not a fighter. Austin's not a fighter. You're, we're going into the same conversation like we are having now. But well, when but, is KSI but, going but to fight somebody up. for real? Yeah, but but I was saying, Anthony, this is a step off from what we saw today. If Austin beats Gibb, that is a tough opponent. I think that's what we're talking about. KSI is not going to be a world champion. He doesn't want to. He wants to ultimately fight right. Jay Paul and then end it. So I think, you know, again, I, I, after seeing these two opponents, people are like, uh, okay, so maybe he needs a couple fights. All right, let Austin be fight one. Let Tate be fight two. You see what I'm saying? So the I next think it should be was, slim. I really don't want to see uh, him and and uh, Gibb so fight. Fluffy. They're too close. I, I like I like this slim fight, but I think it won't be well received yet. I think this was slim's coming I out party. Oh, I, I, I disagree. Like, again, when Slim was there, he was like, you know, there's no beat between him and Deji. So, I mean, no beat between Slim and Deji KSI. I think after that, after beating Temper, that's what people put Temper to elite. Like, yeah. people like Temper was talking about fighting KSI. So, Slim's uh, stock went skyrocket. He's up there. And for KSI to say, yo, Slim, listen to how many times KSI said, oh, Slim look good. He was got one piece of that. That's a fight worthy. But did you hear the crowd reaction? Did you hit when he said slim? The crowd reaction was like, nah. There's no point. Like, Tate would be a better opponent. But yeah, I agree. You you know, yeah, it'd be a much better opponent. I agree. You mentioned Tommy Fury, too. Yeah. That's too much. That's too much for him right now. I think I believe so. I believe so. That's why he's Look, I said I'm a perfect opponent because I'm 5'6. I can either fight out from 55 to 185, and hell, it showed that I gave Tommy Fury problems, so why not get a crack at me? You fighting me tells me if if KSI beats me, that pretty much tells KSI, well, hey, I can potentially fight Tommy Fury, and if I once I beat Anthony and I beat Tommy Fury, then I can go fight Jake. Then I know where my skill set is, and I know I'm ready. That's if you go through me first. Then try to go through Tommy. Now, I, I think we got okay. Go on. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Uh, and Crystal, when I'm done, you can jump in. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm going to talk about is the politics, the behind the scenes. It was a, officially originally going to be Austin and Broom versus KSI. Austin and Broom demand too much money. He priced himself out. He was Austin don't want that shit. You know, like he was being difficult, you know, basically. Who, who, who not to say that Austin might not be difficult again? So that's one politics. I know it was Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury, he signed to uh, Frank Warren. Will Frank Warren let Tommy fight on the zone? Because people don't know the zone, the zone is not very light in the boxing world. Because years back, many moves ago, the zone said, oh, pay per view is dead. Why well, well, pay $50 for a pay per view? And then years later, the zone is selling pay per views. So we'll see. We'll see if Frank and the zone kind of showtime. And this is one thing about the Jake versus KSI. Jake would have to come to the zone. I don't see KSI going to showtime. And that's a big po- politics. So I said bring that up because absolutely like, oh. that, that, no, you're right. That's very big because you're talking about showtime. Politics, been on- yeah. 
exactly yeah. in the zone. There is going to have to be some type of collaboration between the two. No. The zone. Oh, it ain't enough for, from Showtime. Showtime, why do you think we never – and then for people listening, because these guys are finding all these professional platforms, it's the politics. Showtime, PBC, none of them fuck with the zone. None of them. They fuck with Ada Hearn, not really even Oscar De La Hoya. And so that's why the longer Jake stays with Showtime, the longer that's why it, it, case up with Jake is going to happen. But you just put that aside. I don't know if the Frank Warren in the zone uh, relationship is. Bob Arum, he talks shit about Eddie Hearn in the zone, but he will let his fighters fight on the zone. So I don't know about Frank in, in the zone about that. But that's, again, you know, politics. I think, I think uh, wasn't Frank involved with the hold, 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 Canelo lip, fight? Lip, Hello, um, yeah, I think Mission and Anthony said it best, right? I think they said that, you know, KSI's goal is to fight Jake Paul and it's over. So he's got to make the best amount of the short time he's got. You want to do that, you've got to fight Tate. You've got to fight Tate. If the fight's in January, Tate's just lost all of his social platforms. He's got huge fan base at the moment. One of the most searched guys in the world. Don't agree with him in the slightest, but he, he's the money match at the moment. KSI Absolutely. walks for him, um, uh, but that, that's where the money is. So it will be a step up from the two guys that he fought tonight, put together. So it, it kind of ticks all of the boxes. Take on Tate. You've got a natural enemy. You've got a natural good guy that it writes itself. The script writes itself. Tate's going to get a huge payday and, most importantly to him, notoriety and, and more yep. fame. But he, you know, as I said, he's lost his social platforms. How long is that going to last? If we're stretching out one or two years, Tate could just be a name that we heard of a few years back. Um, you know, we stay relevant on social media. People stay relevant on social media uh, yes, without wanting to get... Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without wanting to get hugely political about it. Look at Donald Trump. When Trump was on Twitter, he was getting headlines day after day after day, mainstream media headlines. Now he's on his own platform and, you know, he's not doing too much. You know, he gets but, some But you got factoring how is the, the zone is going to promote Andrew Tate on uh, yeah, I agree with you. and all those other stuff if they don't want Andrew Tate being promoted yeah. on Instagram. So that makes yeah. it worthless because Andrew Tate can only promote from the word of his mouth telling his friends and family no. he can't promote it. Uh, no, no, no. Tate's got the no. connections. Tate's got yeah. the connections. You know, he's going to be on but, but is every single But is the willing to podcast. promote it on their Instagram, their Twitter, their Facebook, all social media? Are they allowed to promote that is what I'm saying due to copyright that will be the, and violations? Yeah, that's, I agree. A good, yeah that, that's a good question. But listen, to Tate has a insane cult-like fan base. You know, like, if there was a fight today, this was clearly a KSI crowd. If it's tapers KSI, maybe it's eighty KSI twenty Tate. Maybe I'm yeah, wrong. Great. Like... But I have to agree yeah, with yeah. Anthony there because if they were like quick to take off Blueface, like they were quick to disassociate Blueface from their event, and Andrew Tate is a very controversial being, and the dude is banned off all social media apps right now. What do you think is going to happen with him in the zone? That's that's I so I agree with Anthony. Like, Tate may not be like promotable for the zone, and that fight may fall through. So, I definitely yeah, think it might be I, a bad look if they actually promote that fight. Exactly, I, th I think we all know boxing's a money game. We've spoken about it, yeah, here. and that and we're talking about blue face money. and Tate. You know, we're talking about two completely different levels of internet celebrity we're talking about somebody who could draw a million box office and somebody who might get a few you know 10 20 000 because of his name so he's money the and, heel. and and also let's not pretend like, like boxing doesn't promote boxers with like domestic violence such assault <laughs> cases like, like let's not like uh -huh. they're, they're the mark. so, so here's the thing, anthony <laughs> like right like right now tate, oh, tate would be um toxic in a couple months, people forget. By January, I don't think the heat would be as hot as it is right now. Yeah, and the cancel culture uh, in this day and age is strong. I do think KSI's call out of Tate is going to trigger Tate, and I think the next Absolutely. live stream, he is good. Like the rant he went on, I was surprised at the amount of 
hate coming from his voice. I was like, yo, you really dislike this dude. So I can imagine Tate's pride, and Tate is a prideful person. Imagine how he feels when yeah, KSI pride calls gets him out. Killed, Ray. Pride gets you killed. It's skills pay that pays the bills, and Tate is an older guy. Like, I definitely think KSI takes him because, like, I want to ask you, like, do you think KSI only looked bad in that Pineda fight because he was frustrated and, like, ti- like I wouldn't say tired, but he just wanted to get him out and Pineda was frustrating the hell out of him because I think I it was think Rome's he fight. Bad. I don't think I, I, I think I think he was frustrated because the dude would get hit and then he'd say get hit in the back of the head. I think he was complaining, like, oh, I got hit in my spine. Like, no, dude, that was a clear body shot. I think Caleb was frustrated. That I hit in the back of, of the that. head is a Latin thing, bro. All I saw Latin, shades of that. All Latin fighters that Some are fight men like that, it, they do that shit. That's some like fights make you look ugly. I will say some fights, like my la- my tenth fight, that fight made me look like an ugly fighter because the guy was so awkward. He was strong, and you know, it, it sometimes you know you don't look your best when it comes to a lower opponent. But um, you know, KSI might look completely different if fight somebody with some more skill. Okay, I gotta let my guy social show down. He was at the event. Social, what's up? What's up, Barry? Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. How was it, man? How was the atmosphere? My mate, fucking hell. It was just like Logan Paul versus KSI won, only fucking better. Mate, it just so much happened. Like, for one, Slim won the UK audience. Like, I'm sorry, everyone cheered from Shout after out that. Out to Slim. Absolutely insane. De- I've, I told you, someone was stopping me from going to this event, and I said my presence would make Deji win, and it fucking did. Deji got a W, and now he's here to conquer the world. <laughs> but, um, nah, it's, it's Congrats, fucking insane. Mate. Honestly, it, it's insane. JJ has just knocked out two people in the same night, and I know, obviously, they were low-level opponents, but still, that's the first time that's probably ever been done on a pro box in, you know, about... It's history, and it's only going to keep going forward. We've got Misfit 2, October 15th. Sorry, it's just so much, so much... The, but the whole event, Jesus Christ! Uh, I didn't actually get any footage, but I spoke to Evil Hero, and uh, he said he'll he'll come back. Um, so so it just it just depends. We'll see what we'll go what goes on. Slim came out of his belt. Everyone was cheering. I didn't get anywhere near it, but yeah. You know, let's talk about Deji. We haven't talked about it yet. Deji looked good time. Yeah, bro. What For was that? I don't think screaming. Fuji didn't even like proper. Uh, you you want to see my reaction when when that happened? By the way. Sorry, I might have been echoing then. But he was too I think Fuzi, if Fuzi was a bit more, how do I say it? If he put his foot a bit on the gas more, because there were spots where he could have countered that. There were spots. Yeah. But then he got overwhelmed, overwhelmed by those punches. Yeah, like Deji, like I was on my feet for the Deji fight versus the KSI fight. Like KSI fight, I just sat down and just watched. Like the Deji fight, yeah. I was in front of my TV, like screaming because I was just in awe. Like what the fuck, man? Like oh man, it's fucking nuts. What about uh, Sensei versus Kenny? Ah, oh, that one, mate. Sensei, man. Hey, that was a robbery. I watched that. I am. That's the only up. thing that's fucking me up right now, man. Besides that, the card was so good. Yeah. I'm that gonna, was, that was a robbery right there. I'm going to get some slack for this. But I do see in how the judges could have potentially gave it to Kenny. I was shocked. You was I was shocked, you said I was shocked, here, as, I was no. shocked as hell because I was expecting yeah. sense it. But listen, listen, when listen, I look sorry. back at it, I can see them hitting all... Because um, can utilize the jab more, and he touched Sensei more. Sensei had the more damaging shots, and definitely should have won that fight. But I can see where the judges say, like, "Oh, can he touch the more with the jab and stay down the outside more?" So let's give it yeah. to Kenny. But if Sensei won that, I do agree it's a robbery. But I do see where the judges would have said, "Oh, Kenny won," and not take into consideration where Face yeah. Sensei would have damaged him. But he had a standing. Face. He had a standing eight count. Yeah, yeah that's, I agree. What's the four, I think? Or did any? Was it no, one no, or two? No. Just one. Okay, okay. Yeah, there was a standing eight, like right at the beginning, which shocked me. But the thing is, it's like Sensei's technique wasn't like he's had a four year layoff, obviously, so he's not going to look as good. But Kenny, like his jab was great, but I think he was just getting caught more. It's so fucking. Ugh, I don't know. It's I a just ma- think the well, fact, here's, what, the what, fact what, that it happened on. to the last phase opponent. It's like, yeah. what the hell, man. 
Kenny actually, like, one thing before... Sorry. I was going to say that Kenny ran off stage. Hold on. Sorry. So, so one thing, and I'll pass to True, uh, Keem, and and, uh, Todd Grissom, they was all talking about, like, they sense they get criticism for not having that killer instinct. And it showed, yeah. like, he heard Kenny. He should have immediately went to attack. Rap well, that, the ref got in the middle of it. it. He didn't let him Oh, I, I, I understand. And, again, I think that's the same ref from the last case, you know, case lot. But, again, he had yeah. him hurt. Yeah. Sensation went immediately went and he took his foot off, off the gas. But I just want so, so social go ahead. But I just want to like, yeah, didn't want to blow his load. Like, I don't know if they showed this on the pay per view, but as Kenny was like, as he got his belt, he was running down the runway, and everyone, his fucking fans who were just cheering a moment ago, going boo to Kenny. I was like, what wow. the fuck? That was hey, actually that's, that's that is big too. in the UK, by the way. Y- your man does not wow. boo you like that. Exactly. That's just not how we work. Like, people fucking that's sheared that's Ryan it. Taylor when he headbutted um, fucking, you know, DK and shout out and he fucking smacked <laughs> Ryan Taylor's head in. But, yeah. Yeah. I, I think Damn. Kenny should do the respectable thing and, like, the rematch. thing is, he, like, Give you rematch, him offer him the rematch because there's nothing else you can do. It's like, what do you want Kenny to do? Vacate the belt and say, you know what? Uh, I'm saying it's a loss, like... Like, it's not his fault, it's the judge's fault. And it's sad that yeah. this is, as Keem said earlier, it's the second time this has happened to him. And unfortunately, yeah. it gets another phase member. But I, as I said, I do see why the judges may have gone by saying, oh, can he just jab face Sensei and kept face Sensei on the outside? Because realistically, face Sensei hurt him, and face Sensei should have gone balls to the walls and at least hit Kenny to the body or like. At least I, unleash some kind of combos on Kenny to get him out of there. But he stayed placid. Kenny kept him at the end of the jab for a lot of the round. And when the highlights of the round were senseis, but those stalling moments in the rounds, Kenny was poking out the jab and keeping him at distance. So the jab's I, the most important punch. So I understand where the judges come from with that too. But I personally sensei deserves. I personally still believe that that explanation is still just very, uh, like I don't I don't believe that because Sensei just had the more effective punches, and you know look look better. I would say sure. than, huh? I'm gonna have to watch the fight again for sure because I I felt I feel the same way, but but I can understand what they're saying about the jab too. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Kenny won that at all, and this is the second time the PBA has uh you know handed Kenny a win. So yeah, I feel like there's some shady shit going on. Um, yeah, Faye's got to stay out of the UK for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. No, no, if if Kenny wants us, and again, Kenny's such a nice guy that he's he, he doesn't deserve all this. I think this is out of but, his control at this point. Oh, I absolutely. But if mm. I'm even this slim or soft poppy, whatever, I'm like I ain't fine King Kenny in um in the UK. I'm just not. We can go to Dubai. We can go to US. I just w- wouldn't trust because again, he he got uh ten eight the first round. In my opinion, Face Sensei clearly won round three. So boom, that should have been enough right there. Like I don't know, man. I, I just don't understand it. Mm-hmm. I feel. Like- I just want to say real quickly. Uh, shout out Cavos. He's in the chat. He's a real one. What up, Cavos? Um, yeah, shout out. I sent him the combinator invite, man. Yeah, I, I sent him an invite. Yeah. Um, Yo, I know but, AT's. I know AT's on the chat, but Dean was looking slick tonight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, you should have seen my face in the first few seconds when Evil Hero was jabbing away at Dean. I was like, nah. I was like, this is not gonna be an upset. He always, he always yeah, let, always let him get a few licks just to read him, and then boom, he does that in the okay. street. Did that in the ring. <laughs> Tall okay. poppy though. Fucking. All right, hold up. Well, one thing, waffle. You know, Sorry. we can come back to this event. Let's talk on the next one. I see Rotman Jr. He's fighting oh, against yeah. Robert Four. Like, yeah. Man, like they, they, they even talked about it. This is great money wise. Great to have his, you know, name. But in, in his boxing, you know, career, this does nothing for him. So, do you agree with that decision? It's tough, man. In the boxing world, he probably hasn't been getting the big bucks like he should be, you know, mm-hmm. for being as impressive as he is. And sometimes, like, you know, what Michael Venom Page did, he didn't do it for the money, but sometimes they can go out and do this stuff. And like what Munson was saying, you know, 
you got to be able to promote yourself, and this is going to be great promotion for him because I'm pretty sure he's going to rock Vader. But I see. agree. You got to, you got to, unfortunately, you know, um, because of my nephew's uh, first loss, you know, uh, they have wrote him off. And this is, I think this is why Jake Paul even chose him. Um, so he has to get his name back out there in order for him to say, you know what, I am serious about the sport and, you know, um, I'm here for anybody. And I think he's he'll be able to do that if he has a big enough platform, because no matter how much boxers might not respect him, platforms will will get to him if he has millions of followers and he can put butts in seats. And that's why it's mm-hmm. like, the same thing like, with Jake like, Paul, the same thing with KSI. People might not respect what he what he does as a boxer, but the man just sold out the O2 Arena. So, regardless of how you feel, it's about how many butts you can put in seats. Yep. At the end of the day, and tonight we were sold out, which is the first time in years, by the way, the O2 has been sold out. Oh, that's insane! Oh, I didn't know that. That's that's cool. Yeah, it's y'all gotta remember O2 Arena is humongous. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm curious about the views. What's the pay per view buys gonna be? I think about Ooh. 300k. I say at least half, half a million, at least. Hell no! Man, really? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. A, I'm gonna go. go I'm gonna go with a quarter mil. I'm gonna go with a quarter mil. I'll go 600 just because it was so cheap, bro. It was 9.99 for people. Yeah, that but had it was 9.99 after. Even on the zone, it was 9.99. So you had to have the. You had to have the platform in order to even yeah. even do with that. So, and a lot of yeah, people in the UK got the zone think already the because they got a lot of stuff down there. They do a lot of stuff in the UK, so the zone got a big platform. In, right. In the UK. Oh yeah. So, yeah. We'll see. Since we'll see. I, since I was at the event, obviously I didn't obviously yeah, just how how did the commentary go? Like I was Wade, I was Joe Weller, oh, I was oh all man. man. <laughs> hey, what's up with Joe Weller? <laughs> It was let's let's not bring up Joe Weller. He's a disrespectful piece of shit, dude. Yeah, fuck Joe Weller. Man. Man. Yeah, like how <laughs> to go to try to push the organizer of the event. Like that was uh, so out of character. Like out of face. Like, I, you know, I hey, think I should he's... fight Joe Weller next, but he'll probably bitch up and not want to fight me, but want to fight Kansai. Maybe I Joe Weller really can't <laughs> fight Anthony. Y'all want nope. me to fight Joe Weller? Joe Weller, Weller can't can fight. Can he won't accept that. Joe Weller can't fight. See. <laughs> See, here's the thing with Joe Weller, man. The last time he fought was January, I believe, social world. Was January 2018 or February 2018? February 3rd, 2018. Yeah, okay, yeah. February so, 3rd, yes. So, again, it's, it's 2022. Joe could have fought anybody during that time. But but in that time, I'll look at interviews when he do with people. Like, oh, I want to fight. And then he changed my, oh, I don't want to fight. Now, I know where this... This week, when the fight case, I want to fight in a streak. He, you know, squared up with K's eyes uh, and uh, video editor, or whatever, uh, Mo. But, like, but what's crazy, like, that was so out of character. Like, if he wants to have a fight with, you know, you can make millions of dollars because what is a big name, he could. He could have fought 2019, 2020, 2021. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's- but, Happy, this is how you know he can't fight. You're, you're going to pick on Mo. Shout out to Mo. But you're going to pick on Mo. Mo is not a fighter. He he's a he's a he's a, a digital editor. Then you're gonna pick on Mams. Mams might talk some shit, but he's not a fighter. And Mams had a right to get up in Joe's face because exactly. The the but I'm saying like Mams is not that a fighter, and Joe knows he's gonna pick the right people to try to pick on. Because Joe knows if he would have gotten Anthony's face or KSI's face, that would have been a completely different story. Or even Deji's face. But you you know he. He's not really a fight. He's just staying relevant as far as trying to pick on somebody. It's the wrong way to go. I think is is very cowardly uh, or yeah. cowardice of, of him to do that like that. Like for me and Anthony, we might say something on social media, but I'm never going to go jump in KSI's face talking about, yo, you you know, this is, I'm a professional boxer. They don't do nothing for me. And it, Absolutely. It makes me they all, respect. Hey, Mushin, they always tell us every time when we do our face off, the promoter always says no one gets paid till after the fight, gentlemen. Oh, I sh- listen, man. Every fight, I shake my opponent's hand because I'm gonna punch you in the face the next day anyway. So it's no point of wasting my energy, even though I yeah. and I'm and I've lost so much weight. I'm not wasting my energy trying to fight you before I gotta fight you. That's not happening. That's people who can't control their energy. And for Joe Weller to do that, like he's he's a. 
he's a coward and he's a punk because he he pick he's he chose to ch- to pick people or to try to uh uh get in altercations with people who don't fight. Anybody else would have put him to sleep right there, and he knows that. That's why he hasn't fought in a long time. Get called him out. He was being a bully, bro. He was, I don't like I don't like that. That's called bullying. Or, yeah, he hey. called him out in 2019, I believe, and he literally said he's stuck in Gibb because. He doesn't want to fight Gib. Like people have yeah. called him out, and he's just dumb. Gib's trashing him. That's why. Convos, what's good, man? What's your thought the overall event? Yo, uh, wait, can you hear me? Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, man, the yeah. event was cool, man. It was really good. Uh, I I jumped in because I heard you talk about a uh, KSI's manager. I think that guy's a bum. Uh, I think he's a bit <laughs> of a twat, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I don't like word. Mams either. I I really don't. I don't really like you know how Mams does his thing either. I I don't like that either. But no, come on now. I I, no, I but, like um, also though you said that um, apparently I've heard on the grapevine that he did MMA for like 10, 15 years or something. We Someone don't told me that. that. That's a that's a that's a that's a very long vine because nobody knows. Pull up a record. Listen, if I if, when I say I, I think I'm, I'm saying just training though, not like he's a fighter or anything. Like you just he's you know. And guess what? Kind of my thing. mother, my mother also trained for like 15 years in karate. I'm not going to tell her. I'm not going to say, oh, she can beat you. That that don't mean nothing. People I mean, can, she might be able to, man. Oh, you know. You you you're right. You might be. Able to, but I'm saying <laughs> I love the sarcasm. Training it's in the blood. It's in the to, blood. Training and actually getting into that ring. And and signing that professional uh uh contract and 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 fighting in front of that crowd is completely different. Oh, Anybody yeah, for can sure. be like that in in the uh in practice. I don't care if you practice it for twenty years. It don't mean yeah. you can. Fight. Bro, I was just talking about when he was offering Joe Weather out for a car park scrap. That was kind of like the thing I was chatting about. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was funny. Not funny. Way, funny it, it might help him out, you know. Yo, Cabo. It might. Uh, yo, Cavos, I want to hear from you. By the way, longtime fan, known you since uh, 2018, but or 2017, whatever. I want to know what you feel about the Deji win. <laughs> yeah, but I, I made a I made a video. Uh, I was streaming it as well. Like I do like a live watch parties of all these fights. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that fair, I said fair play to him, man. Look, me and Deji, I fucking hate the guy. Uh, <laughs> but but I have my own reasons. It's not it's not. Uh, petty is because you know me and him have actual like legal history like try taking yeah. it to court and stuff so i have a whole like history of deji like that but i said in my video man like he did really well and i was kind of I, I, part of me was really happy for him man seeing him like smiling after the win like i don't know man it was a bit infectious seeing that that kind of yeah. thing man it, that's respect yeah. right there Carlos, you think you guys could ever squash it with everyone saying that deji's mentality and personality has changed and matured a lot do you think if he ever approached you and extended an apology for you know your pat the past. Would you squash the beef with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. If he came and like, if he came and told me like it was dumb what he did to me, like, uh, yeah, for sure, I'd be down. But I think uh, what he did wasn't very like within the was very like a YouTubery thing to do, man. We don't we you know YouTubers make videos on each other, and if you're wrong, people fight back. It never goes legal, and when it does go legal, it, it's a stress on everyone, not just me. It's my family and like my whole life it took over like months of my life so and it was bullshit and uh i have i have things but if deji came to me and said to me like look let's squash it and you can put your videos back up i'd be down i'd be like cool 100 <laughs> percent, yo but as far as the commentary goes social um i think they were great uh, i kind of missed wade on the main com- commentary honestly but it was really yeah. good um True Jordy was brutally, brutally honest. Yeah, so shout out to True. To you. Yeah, shout out to True. All right. Even if they invite him back, but he was he was pretty great. Yeah, but he said yeah. some yeah. things. That were, <laughs> he was just honest. He about said, it, we're yeah, all he, was honest. he said whoever was a match mate, whoever made a match between uh, Swarms and the pro boxer needs to be fired. Like he said yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's yeah, brutally that... honest. And again, and he's <laughs> right. Like. Yeah, fucking yeah, swarm that should have been the main really event after all. KSI too much. I mean, it's got it gave him two dubs, like that's good and everything. Two KOs. Yeah, but, I mean, but like rep and like you know notoriety, it's, you still got to have a couple fights still. It know? doesn't do anything yeah. for his skill set though. 
it, it's exactly. Like, he didn't like, even get to do anything. Hey, if they keep giving me a bunch of bums and nobody can test me, when I get to that level of 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 Lawrence O'Coley, I'm gonna get trashed. Why? Because I'm gonna have false confidence. And when it comes to yeah. KSI, he got to fight somebody that's actually going to fight him back. You talk about a rapper who has probably never fought a day in his life as far as professional he, boxing or anything like like the platform that he just fought on. And then yeah. the other guy who probably fought all his cousins in Mexico. We don't want <laughs> we yeah. you know what I'm saying like it <laughs> yeah. does it does nothing for your skill set. You no, have to is. you have to challenge yourself and you have to push yourself in order to to really see where what you're made of. Like yeah. Logan, he saw what he was made of. That's what really told me, okay, KSI got meant got he has the mental fortitude in order to be a professional boxer or just, you know, be in the sport. But yeah. fighting swar- swarms and and that other dude, come on. The hey, the most driver. embarrassing part, I didn't mean to cut you off. Most embarrassing part about that event that particular particular part was swarms was like yeah i've only been fighting for about two weeks <laughs> i'm like bro you could have anybody else come in and step in but you decided to pick swarms a rapper you made a hey, he was he was warming up he was bro. warming up you gotta give it to him he's warming up warming cool. up he was swarming up hey he hey, was, hey, he hey listen, do we do we warm up in a eight rounds of sparring I know, when Anthony, against a pro boxer he's he's the thing is right this is where this is where my argument comes in. My argument is not who he chose. My argument is the fact that people keep trying to translate this win into, oh, he can fight somebody who's bigger than that. That's where my argument is. Hey, whatever, whoever you want to fight for your for your uh for your uh for your warm up or for your for your for your tune up, whatever. Uh, but you know, when you start to talk about your next fight and okay, well this you can't you can't try to say, Oh, that's that's marketable because I beat these two. It's like me, I my fourth fight, I fought a guy that was like oh and four, like with four losses. It was my tuna fight. I'm never gonna look at him and say, Yeah, I beat that guy so I can beat somebody who's who's really known who got skills i'm never gonna look at that because it was just a tune-up fight it was just to like test the waters again 100%. but now it's uh you know now he has to fight somebody but he's real skill. My, he's, it's like bro you can't be showboating when these guys i can see if he was fighting jake and he was doing it to jake then you're doing the push-ups but you're showboating on some warm-ups bro it's like come on bro see, hey look this uh, shit wouldn't happen one... in America. This shit, would, they would never let them fight twice in America. They wouldn't even let them sanction this shit in America. A rapper? <laughs> I can see if he was a fighter, but a rapper. And, and you know what? I, I do want to talk about the um, the, the governing body. The governing body. I'm sorry. The, mm-hmm. the 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 main one is the British Board of Boxing. They did not sanction this event. This event was by the Professional Boxing Association. So the main, and that's why uh, Slim, Dina Great, they all got those influencer championship belts and the Misfits belts because the British board, they're the real ones. Like, if you want to be in the one of those British Commonwealth uh, championship picture or a WBO, whatever, you have to go there. So that's why, you know, this event, they basically had their own championship belts. So kind of like Anthony said, like, yeah, in the U.S., Depending on state, they wouldn't sanction it. But for this one, because it was the you know pro boxing association, they was able to. Hey, happy punch question. So does this does these wins count as actual professional records? No. As if they would. Hell no. Nope. Oh, hold on, I, ho- hold on, hold on. I'm glad okay. you said that because if you go to the, I think it's, it's the B B B O C whatever dot com. Let's type in British box, British boxing board. You know, dot com, whatever, and it's, and it's the governing body, and they show who are they affiliated with. One of the people that they're affiliated with is Box Rec. Uh, Box Rec did not recognize this event. Why? Because Box Rec saw this as was well, sanctioned by you know uh, PBA, and they're like, eh. So yeah, so Box Rec didn't recognize or sanction oh, these. Okay, so if he fought on, if he fought Jake on Showtime, it's going to say one and zero KSI. If he fought Jake on Showtime, right? Agreed. 
Okay, so did, okay, now now this is a whole different concept we're going. Man, you should have been know that, Anthony. You hey, man, hey, bro, <laughs> hey, I'm wilding out. I'm thinking like, oh, these guys got their pro wins. Were these 10-ounce gloves or, or 14s? It don't matter if it was 8-ounce gloves. It's, if, it's not, if it's not on box rack, it don't count. Well, where did, where did Will, you- Will, Will, I, I believe it's 10-ounce gloves, but like, because um, all everybody fought was, was pro. Now there's a YouTube box rack. It's uh, YT box rack, and they have all the YouTubers. They're kind of like, I don't say in cahoots, but they, they recognize all the YouTubers, like Cray Class, Social Knockouts. So, yeah, so Misfits is going to be recognized by box rack, but they're going to be recognized by a uh, YouTube box rack. This Isn't is that made the thing though. I thought that was what, what, what? The the YouTube box rack. What about it? I thought that was a fan made thing, not like a. No, like it's a, real. Yeah, it, it's that's real. official. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're they're official now. I, I don't know if they uh-huh. have any ties to the original box rack. I have no idea. But yeah, the uh, professional box association. That keeps Sanction. track of everything. If they, they, yeah, they, 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 they're, they, not, they're not affiliated with Box Rack. Exactly. So so everybody right. on here was pro and you know the YouTube Box Rack recognized it, but uh Box Rack only recognized fights that was sanctioned by the British Boxing Board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so you won't see this on Box Rack. So if he does so if he wants to fight Tommy Fury, let's say if he does, it's gonna to have to be under the British boxing law and it will have to be sanctioned as a pro boxing bout and not a YouTube bout. So I kinda of got confused. So if no, he fights Tommy this Fury, is, the first No all these fights are pros. Like the the pro boxing. But Association. can he take that pro record and come to America and fight somebody like Jake with that pro record? Depends. It, it really d- depends because you want well, because when Jake was on Thriller, they didn't mention the Deji fight, and because a lot of, like when they went with the Showtime, they only talk about giving up. So you know w- w- we'll see, man. W- we'll see. Like if 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 it's if for some reason K side comes, whatever, I highly doubt they're gonna talk about these two fights because they was because ain't no highlights, truthfully. Well, well, Trello was definitely a pro fight when he fought. Oh, yeah. Like, when he yeah. fought Ben Askren and stuff, yeah. that, that was pro under – because he was dealing – you're dealing with the board, boxing associate board and everything. Yeah, but, but like, on the trailers and all that, they didn't even mention the Deji fight. That That's what I'm talking about. So, you're right. So, in case there was a fight here, some commission probably wouldn't even recognize these two fights. It depends. <laughs> I don't know it's, it's kind of confusion for people, but like this, this is real. Like, again, these guys are fighting on the same platforms as pro boxers, so you have to know the politics, you have to know the, the history, you know. Like, again, I just found out, and because like, it was two weeks before the event, I'm like, how come none of these fights on box red, but social gloves is Len McBroom, Adam Sawa, Austin Broom, give their own box rip, and it was on here. Had a little bit of research, I said, okay, that's why the number one. Station body is the British Boxing Board, and they're you know station by box rep. Apparently, the British Board of Box that commission apparently is really difficult to get a boxing license in the UK because of them. So, for an event like this, they would like never sanction this. So, yeah. I think that's what Mams was explaining, which is why they had to go that YouTube boxing rec route that. The yeah. British board would not sanction this. Whereas if when they went to America, it was much easier to get a um a boxing license. That's why um I think earlier in the lockdown when people were asking why doesn't Jake and KSI fight, uh why KSI wasn't training in the UK, KSI said, I'm not a pro boxer in the UK. I'm pro I'm licensed in America, so I can't train as a pro in the UK when they were only allowing pro boxers to train during the lockdown. I have a, I have a bit of a concern whenever it comes to misfits. Like, you know, obviously we're gonna have like these uh, sanctioning bodies like the PBA running the misfit stuff. What about if they want to do a event, say, in the United States? What are they gonna do then? We'll see. That, that, that's a great question. We just gotta wait and see. Yeah, I just don't know if I really trust the PBA to be honest, because with all the 
the King County stuff. Uh, there's just there's several. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it'll be under under an uh an umbrella that has already sanctions on it, such as okay. the zone, such as um Showtime, something like that. I'd say the luckiest they can get to, or the clo- closest they could get to doing a Misfits in uh in the United States is going to Florida. Because Florida will sanction fucking anything. <laughs> no, they can go to California because the Athletic State Commission in California, CSAC, are strict as hell. They'll make sure everybody do a drug test. They're going to make sure everybody has all the right requirements for a bro- before a pro boxing license is given out. EKGs, everything. Once you get all that done, then they will give you a pro boxing license in California. Uh, okay. So that's why a lot of people go to Florida because it's a more lenient. Look how they sanctioned the Holyfield versus Vitor fight. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I Creator just want to say, uh, I just want to say we gotta. I hope I hope that for the fight with um Hasim and Vitor that there's uh some heavy heavy drug testing because <laughs> you know uh, Vitor. It's Vitor. Uh, yeah, Vitor. T R T. Juice up. <laughs> Vitor. Okay, uh, I have a question for Congress. Who do you want to see KSI fight next? Um, I'd like to see him fight uh, Austin McBroom or Salt Pappy. McBroom, I agree with. Yeah, Salt Pappy, maybe one more fight if he was going to get, but I don't think he's. I don't know yeah. if draw is as big as uh, Austin McBroom's a much bigger draw. Uh, than so happy, so what, what about KSI versus Tate? Oh man, well, that would be a great fight. I just don't see it happening, uh, soon. I don't know. Yeah. I have a question, man. One more would you ever get into the ring? Because I remember when you won the fight years yeah, ago, man. even when even yeah. when fame, even when fame MMA was a thing, you, you always, you always want to smoke. Well, yeah, no, we, we had a, I had a contract for fame MMA. Uh, we sent it out to different people. You had Christian on. Uh, earlier, he, he if he was here right now, we we could have talked about that. Um, that all went to shit though. So thank fuck I didn't sign to anything because no one got paid. It was like a social gloves thing. But wow. uh, we offered um, at that time it was uh, Jack Mate, a uh, big UK YouTuber, Willany as well, uh, who are all about my height, my my size. And then we had I'm Alex as well, which was a big draw. But that fight would have not been fair because he's like uh, he's like I think he's like five foot. Six or seven, yeah. and probably wait. But huge motherfucker. <laughs> but then, JMX my fox runner as well. Yeah, well, JMX, I'd like to see him fight again. He's he was good. Yeah, he's, he so. actually said he wants to cut down to cruiserweight. I think so. That opens doors, and he is a big boy. So that would be crazy. He he would be really good. Yeah. Fight again. I, I agreed. Um. <laughs> so, so is anybody who, who you want to call out? And fight and potential misfits or even Craig Clash. I think you watch Craig Clash. Is there any like potential points you would want to fight? Oh, uh, Carvis, is there any potential points? You oh, want is, to that, is that me? Yeah, yeah. If anybody yeah. you want to fight on misfits or Craig Bro, Clash would, or whatever, I don't know. I'd love to fuck up Death Noodles though. Do you know who he is? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Him. Unfortunately. 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 Uh, well, I, I made him cry and almost quit YouTube. So. It's only fitting that I'd smash his face in for a bit as well. Hey, Cabos, let me know if you need some help. I'll come over there and help you spar. Yeah, man. Let's yeah. go. I'd be fucking down, man. It'd be sick. Uh, but I need to find someone like... I'm kind of like Joe Weller in the same boat where like I kind of need to like want to fuck someone up. I don't want to just do it for like a pay-per-view event or something. like Or like an undercard or some shit. I want to like... So it's always been like people I don't like. Like I'm Alex or Death Noodles or... I don't know. I'd see. I'd see if uh, I, I said Deji maybe a few uh, a few weeks back or months back. Sorry, before after the I'm Alex uh, I'm Alex fight, Alex Wasabi fight. But um, yeah, he looks good, man. And uh, I don't know if I'd be able to catch up that quick to that level he's at. You know? <laughs> nah, that, that, respectfully, no. Nah. <laughs> Deji, De- Deji looks oh, man. good, man. Look, like, that boy he... Deji been training for life. Deji yeah. did look good, bro. But also, Fuzi looked bad. I will say that. Fuzzy didn't. Yeah, do good I think Fuzzy was working on his body more than he was uh, boxing. Cause he, it, yeah, okay, yeah, he looks good. He looks in shape, but in shape don't mean nothing if you ain't got no skills. Fuzzy looked way better than his first fight, though. We have to give him that. Like yeah. he looked like ten times better than that slim fight. 
Yeah. I agree. And shout out to Fuzi. You know, he's my Muslim brother. I just call it like it is. I call it spade a spade. Uh, I think he worked on his body more than he did his boxing skills. Yeah. I think he just who, blacked out again. Who who do you want Fuzi to fight next? And do you want to see him Definitely. fight again? Vitali. Oh, I, I was about to say. Good. I think That's he was going to call out Vitali. When if he won, but I, I honestly don't think like who is there really for Fuzi to fight that looks like he can win? To be very honest, Bryce, Bryce Hall. Hall, Bryce Hall, <laughs> yeah. I think Fuzi should should, oh, should oh, hang oh. out. I think sorry, he should hang out. catching strays. About that, we didn't even bring that up. Uh, Deji actually called out Bryce Hall after his fight. Oh yeah. yeah. So I guess uh, it's another. Yeah, I guess it's another reason cool now, with Deji. Yeah, it, it, and and see here, here's another thing. Another thing with this event show is experience. Slim won because of experience. Deji won because of experience, and KSI of course won because of experience. But like yeah, like if if it is Deji versus Bryce Hall, that'd be Deji's fifth fight. That'd be Bryce Hall's second. Like no, if if anything, it should be Bryce versus uh Fousey, You know, because all right, well, one guy Bryce versus Wasabi. I was gonna say Wasabi Deji too. Well, see, it's rumored that Al Sasabi's fighting I Dubs on Crit Clash too. I think I Dubs takes that one. They should get Sam Hyde on Creator Clash too. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> they won't allow it. I Sam mean, the comments didn't even happen. Real time. It was the just, thing is with Creator hey, Clash, you've got to be one of the. Sorry. Hey, Maybe let's, if, talk about, let's talk about that. Which event to you was better, Cray Clash or Misfits? Here's what I'm going to say. For Cray Clash, I can watch the whole event from the opening fight to the last fight without skipping fights. For Misfits, when next time I watch this, I'm skipping the like at least three fights. <laughs> so it, it, it just is. I think Misfits was a better overall. It was big. It was bigger. And look, after yeah. we all talking, we're all fancy booking. And for Cray Clash, okay, it was fine. And we went on. So I think this was the better overall event, but the better yeah. there's more better fights on Craig Clash. But that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I agree with that. <laughs> I, I I kind of agree, but I kind of disagree. Like I guess you can skip the KSI fights, but unless you look at them as comedy and as funny, like I think like this was one of the YouTube events that I look forward to all the fights and enjoyed all the fights and like got up on my seat for multiple like saw poppy i jumped out my chair screaming oh. um God. did you fight like the I only fight that... vibes again man this this event for sure yeah, yeah. if i'm just saying if uh I, I if, the, at, if the I ref was wasn't counting at, for that fight uh, if the ref wasn't counting like doing a eight count for the salt poppy fight we would have had the fastest knockout in youtube boxing history there it would have been 11 seconds does anyone know what it was uh like because dad's knockout was 22 seconds does anyone know how quick salt poppy's one was 29 yeah Yeah, oh you fall that's so fucking boy, salt poppy is a big puncher yeah He's an absolute monster. Bro, I, like, bro, I didn't know he had that in him. I it's like, his confidence. He, it keeps him calm, man. That confidence is that double used hook, to him. That double and he hook is a break. problem. Oh, yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah, uh, you got to give Hello Ham credit. He fought yeah, this guy with leg, cancer. But look what he just did. <laughs> Wait, did you say somebody fought with cancer? <laughs> with skin yeah, cancer. Yeah, no. Yeah, hello, yeah. Ham fought with Poppy and went the whole distance with him, and he had skin cancer. And this guy, no. you just fought, is out in 20 seconds. Wait, he had, he had skin cancer? Yeah, and we didn't know <laughs> until weeks later. What? Hey, hey Paul, you got to stop up. laughing. No I wonder why this is a YouTube up. boxing event. But it's time. Up. It's like, that's, it, I laugh at fucked up shit, I'm sorry, but it's fucked up. <laughs> Yo, so they let somebody fight with skin cancer? On on, sh- on yeah. Showstar, yeah, like that was... Shitstar. <laughs> Oh shit, yeah, show stuff. Yeah, yeah, Did they there even you know? <laughs> they um, had to know. They had to know. I don't know. That, that, that nobody did medical. Nice. Nobody no, did they, they didn't really. I don't, I don't think they did medical. I'm not sure. I, I was going to say, Anthony can test this. That was shit star, man. They was unorganized. 
So I wouldn't pour past him. But Dang. yeah, it was it was like uh hello him like, like said like I think I wouldn't say they so later. on my experience as far as medicals, like it was just the doctor denied of the show. That was it. They didn't have you go in do physical blood tests, EKGs, eye exam. You know, they didn't have none of that. It was just the doctor checking your eyes, you good, checking your wrists, your your knuckles to make sure you ain't got nothing broken, your cheekbone, you, you know, and you, all right. You're good to go. Sign off. That was pretty much what they were doing night of the show. And guess what was the same sanctioning body that took care of Showstar? It was the PBA, the same one that we saw tonight. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. that yeah. was PBA. Hey, look, man, I can't yeah. be talking too much because y'all got to record it, and I don't want this to be used against me. But look, man, PBA, bro, they ain't know y'all better be careful playing with PBA because because uh-huh. you saw what they you saw what they did at uh on Showstar. Boy, they, man, nine out of ten British boxers won. And, and, and it was funny because, you know, it was so crazy. Hmm. The guy who was refereeing the KSI fight with Pineda was the same judge who was judging the King Kenny versus Temper fight. And I was calling him out on his shit. But, oh, hey, wow. I didn't know about that. I remember. I was like, "Why does that ref look so familiar?" And I told Showstar guy, I said, "Look," and this is me telling to the Showstar guy, to K. Okay. I said, "K, okay, look, that judge, he's gonna fuck over Temper. I see him not even giving a fuck. He just gave Ken- Kenny a fucking ten out of nine, and Temper clearly won the first round." Kenny's my boy, but I was just, you know, just letting you know. So I told K, and and I told K, and K went by him, and he was like, oh, shit, right. And I looked at him, and then some guy from the other show, Star Event, got mad upset at me because I was watching the judge. And then after the fight, Kenny gets the fight, and then they put out this big announcement. We felt like we were pressured by the UK fans, so we didn't want to feel like we were attacked and felt unsafe, so we gave we gave up the winner to King Kenny. That's insane. And let's just yeah. say... Let's just that's say, the, that, that's uh, the PBA. Let's just say, two times now, there's been a face guy who has went up against King Kenny, and they have been robbed of a win. You know what I think it is as well? Like, genuinely, when I was in the crowd, when, when, when King Kenny was out and, like, beta squad, I think they've got more fans there than, like, KSI and Deji. Because I just hear more cheers when Kenny's there than, like, Deji or JJ. It was weird. Like, I think because he's so big in the UK, because, like, Nico, what he's done for the UK and stuff, and... You know, it's because it's one of his boys, it's like everyone. Like, I think what it is, the commission just scared of like the UK just like doing all kinds of dodgy shit. Like, you know, how, like that fan jumped in the ring, but like 10 times fucking worse. Because let's be honest, it's, it's the UK. <laughs> we, we, we have some mad fucking fans. I mean, the UK has always been that bias shit, man. It, man, when you're fighting in America, hey, anything can go on. Like, hey, hey. Moosin, you, you already know what it is fighting in America. You be like, yo, I want to fight. Oh, shit, somebody else has got to win. That's how it is in America. Yep. And the UK, you like, yeah, I won this fight. But you know, they you like, fuck, man, I went to decision with this motherfucker. They're going to give it to him on a split. Yeah, you see I what, know if you, I ever hey, have to fight somebody Y'all see, y'all see what they did to the me? UK. Right. Y'all see what they did to me in Dubai? Y'all see what they did to me yeah. in Dubai? That's bullshit. bullshit. And I was like, <laughs> I look, and I looked at the judges like, all right, I'm gonna walk out. I'm not gonna talk. But but that's the thing when you're dealing with the PBA. Uh huh. All right, then I guess I guess we just can't trust PBA then. Hey y'all, it was a pleasure. I, I gotta go make my daughter dinner. Uh, thank y'all for having me. I appreciate y'all. You know, shout out to Happy Anytime. Party. Anytime. Shout it was out. awesome talking. Hey, to absolutely. Brother, I'm out of here. My wife and kids it's their birthday, so I need to get out of here. I'll talk to y'all soon, and I'll see y'all in October, baby. Respect to you too. Be safe, y'all. Peace out. Oh, Peace out. actually, it's not about that card as well. I just they've just revealed that it's going to be in Sheffield. That is very close to where I live, so I might be able to go to that one. Like uh, literally, yeah. a, like a train journey away. But yeah, are we let's, like? Let, let, let's talk about that because for people who don't know, again, it's going to be on London time. That's the same day as a UFC event, uh, Deontay Wilder's return, and David oh, Haney God. versus George Kimbosis. Now the, the now. That they event is, but it's, it's gonna clash head to head because that's gonna be in UK time, but it's all on the same day. Bro, my thing is, I think like that the Jay Swinger fight 
I yeah, think we should have gotten a better opponent. Like, who, who what actually is he? Is he a YouTuber? Is he like a reality star? Who is he fighting? Um, uh, Churdley? I don't know the guy. Like, honestly, I don't know the guy. And I don't either. I tried looking him up. I just could not find anything. His and Instagram was all pretty I found weird. Was, all I found was a Twitter account called Turd, and it only had one fucking tweet and it said, fuck 2020, and that was it. F- uh, fair enough. <laughs> fair I mean, Jay, like, like, obviously, uh, I'm a bit biased. Sorry. I was saying, I'm a bit biased because he's my favorite YouTuber, Jay, but obviously, I oh, welcome to Keem in the house, but we're saying waffle. I, I do want Jay to fight better competition because here's the thing. I think yeah. Jay, with the time he's put in and the transformation he's gone through as well, like, if you follow Jay on Instagram, you know for the past few years, he's been training boxing on the side. So I would love for him to become a big player in this, like, whole YouTube boxing scene. Fight better guys like there's Taylor Holder available in his weight class. Guys like Alex Wasabi in his weight class. And, you know, maybe work his way up to an eventual... Gib rematch because if the first yeah. fight was fireworks and they were novices, imagine what a second fight between these two guys would be. And they have way more experience under their belt. Another fight of the night for sure. That's a main event. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. want to say as well, Keem, absolute fucking W for the people you signed yeah. to Happy Punch. What a fucking show they put on tonight. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, dude, it all comes down to um when winners you know mm-hmm. like i mean look dude sensei won too you know at, yeah happy punch, punch. Went four and one. <laughs> happy punch went four and one yeah ha- happy punch clearly went four and one um i think fuzi literally just wasn't prepared for the improvements of deji all right deji finally finally has fixed all the issues right and this is fuzi's second fight you know and he went up against the the best Deji there ever was. That Deji that we saw tonight would have beat Alex Wasabi and could have beat uh, that other kid. Um, for, Vinny? For, yeah, yeah, Vinny yeah, Hager. The Deji we saw tonight was just on another fucking level. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it might be Bryce Hall versus Deji. I think that's an easy dub for Deji. Like, and he just looked. He level up, but again, you need big names, you know, big names to and and getting Bryce Hall be a big name on his resume. Bryce Hall's not. I don't think Bryce Hall's going to take that fight after what just happened. I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, Bryce Hall tweeted though. He said that said it looks like you and I have to run it up, Deji. Yeah, well, that's that was quite the deal. He said once Deji gets a win, he'd fight him. So, mm. fuck it, Joe Weller versus Fuzzy. Uh, nah, the fight the fight with Joe Weller is with Jidian. Jidian versus Joe Weller. We're going to make that happen. Oh, oh, let's go. <laughs> Eric's been wanting to fight, too. He was just in here earlier when I was talking. Uh, I don't I don't know where he went, but... Yeah, I yeah. said invite. I'd just like to say real quickly, uh, Keemstar, great job on the commentary. I was really enjoying you on the commentary table, and uh, Wade Plem, he's in the... He's in the chat right now. Great job with the interviews, brother. So, yeah. Yeah, Miss Wade on the main commentary. But you guys, you and True Jordy were, like, brutally honest. It was it was awesome. I have yeah. I have no idea, like, what I even sounded like. Uh, to, to be honest, there's after parties and things going on. And I, like, went right to my hotel room. And I'm just drained. Like, I am done <laughs> trying to... <laughs> trying to convert over to this UK time was a huge challenge. I wasn't sleeping, and I'm just praying that I, I made sense on the commentary. But I will yeah. say, um, yeah, I mean, look at all the uh, events that we've had in the past where they had professional commentators and whatnot that didn't really understand the community, that didn't know the backstory. I mean, that stuff's important. Um, but the combo that we had tonight was really, really good, in my opinion, because you had me who had the backstory. You had True Jordy, who's like uh, a hybrid of like understanding fighting and knowing the the history of influencer boxing, and then you had Todd with us, which is an absolute fucking pro. That guy's right. awesome. Yeah, and you guys were reacting perfectly too to every like big moment because there were so many of them. That's probably why you guys are so tired. But 
Yeah. And Todd was, was Todd, Todd wasn't holding back either. Todd was like, that's bullshit. <laughs> you know, Todd's calling out the refs and stuff. That's what you I'm know, saying. I'm, Brutally honest. And that's what was awesome about it, I think. That's yeah, the I had to like part. tiptoe because it's only like my second time doing it. So, you know, I'm still learning it. But yeah. I think it's okay for misfits. We'll be okay if it was a Canelo fight, though. I think that'd be different. <laughs> On this wing, kind of, you know, like have a dream, you know, losing tie, you know, but other, other fight could be more, a little more professional. But this one, you, you can just, you know, be overall. Did you guys see me interview Joe Weller in the uh, in the pre stream? Oh, <laughs> uh, we, I don't think so. I didn't. I woke up like 30 minutes before the event started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I go to Joe Weller, I go, look, I, I watched your new YouTube video. He goes, oh, thanks, man. And I'm like, yeah, I saw that you went to go mine for this rare gem. Um, and I think it was called Alien or something. I don't know. It's It's got this weird name to it. And I'm like, you know, the reason why you went to go find those gems is because they were trending on TikTok because they're supposed to like have some mystical power or whatever. And then you dug up like five of them. So I went on TikTok to figure out what the mystery was with this gem that you were digging up. And it turns out that like, apparently this gem moves obstacles out of your life for you to get on the road, you know, the path that you're supposed to be on. And I'm like, ever since you had those gems, man, you got an issue with cancer. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to get on the right path uh he handled it well and he responded really well um but yeah i don't know how you responded to mams though <laughs> wait what happened what do i not know oh my god <laughs> in the pre-show him and mams were squaring up on each other pretty much they wanted to go fight in the parking lot no way. I didn't even know that existed. Dude, someone give me the footage. Where's the clip at? It's all <laughs> over Twitter. It's all over Twitter. Just look up Mams and Joe. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if Wade had the same problem I had, but me and True Jordy were like so frustrated because we had no connection to the internet at all. Like it barely worked in the dressing rooms. And as soon as we got out to the yes, stage, we had, we had nothing. So we had no idea what was going on on Twitter. Nothing. There's days worth of mentions. I'm sure you guys are going to have a field day looking at everything. Yeah, you guys are going to love it. Speaking of loving it, I see our headliner, which I'm going to love to see. That that was a terrible whatever. But Hasim Rockman Jr. is in the chat, and I'm going to love to see him headline the next Misfits. There we go. That's oh, can, can we invite Nicholas Diorio up as a speaker as well? He's pounding the, the fist. Okay. Okay. Uh... Oh, God. All right, Kim, I need you to accept the co-host, because that way I can ask more people. I think uh, Twitter Space has, like, a limit. Okay. Who would you guys okay. give uh, Fight of the Night to? I'm curious, because I said Slim and Temper. Oh, I Me agree. Too. <laughs> Me too. It was beautiful. And you know what I love? After I said this before, but Slim won the fucking UK audience over. So many people were cheering for him. Like... It was insane. I don't know. Like it was the whole arena, but where I was at, everyone was like slam. It was crazy. Yeah, I think, walk, I think slam even the gets performance of the night ever. Too. I mean, obviously, slam had was the episode of the night, right? And he deserves all the respect in the world. Especially, like, look, here's where we gotta give guys respect. Are they promoting the fight? Slim promoted the fight, dude. Slim was fucking <laughs> going nuts. He, he shot him. every camera with a crossbow. Two dude, weeks notice. That, that intro, the music that he came out with, the, the classic the, white the chicks. Pepper versus Slim on Wade's uh, Instagram, like every bit of it. Like, dude, he was built for this influencer boxing shit. It reminds Thanks. me of 2018 influencer boxing. So he deserves all the respect in the world. But. Man, I really like that salt poppy knockout. Oh, yeah. insane! Twenty nine seconds. It was Dean. Dean if had the, a really if great If the ref didn't too. count, I I said. Already. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I actually thought that I would see more. Uh, you know, I hate to say this. I don't even want to say this because I don't want to say anything negative towards my dude who walked away with a great win. But I just thought Dean would do even better than what I saw. And I think the problem was Evil Hero trained hard. Evil Hero, you got to give that kid some credit. He, he was in good shape. Than I expected. 
Yeah, he was in really good shape, and respect to him. Like, respect to everybody yeah. that took the fights with the Happy Punch people, pretty much. Andy Worski and Oh. Yeah. Dude, we have... Andy, Andy Worski put out a Twitter video. I don't know if you've seen it. And he goes... <laughs> Not too bad for thirty seconds uh, worth worth thirty worth of work. <laughs> hey, he got like a you know multi thousand dollar paycheck. He's like, whatever, man. I'm so glad I got this opportunity. <laughs> if if the ref wasn't so slow at counting, you would we would have seen this fastest uh, knockout on YouTube boxing history. Knocked him down at eleven seconds. Dad's was uh, twenty two seconds, but Sol got twenty nine. But like like you just said, if that was like immediate wave off. That would have been the quickest. I'm still, you know, in my head, that is the quickest we've ever seen a YouTuber put someone out. You know, yeah. my uh, my co-host on commentating, they were complaining about the refs with these standing A counts. Thoughts? Oh, oh man. The, the, especially the last fight. The boxer, the uh, case I fought, he clearly didn't want to fight. He, he should have just waited it off because, like, it just dragged mm-hmm. and it dragged and it dragged. And then True, True was like, get this over with. And I was like, yes, but he was always complaining. He's whining. He's a clone crow professional. And then, if that referee did not step in, Faye Sensei would have stopped King Candy without a doubt. I felt so bad for KSI because, like, look, it's last minute. We're trying to save the event. We're just trying to get an opponent in there. And, you know, these opponents just weren't yeah, – it wasn't fair to KSI, you know? Honestly, the yeah. Nazi could have kept up more of a fight than that. Let's be honest. <laughs> I fucking Haseem. love swarms. I love swarms so much. Like <laughs> I want to see swarms back. Madman, what a madman! Haseem, I, I sent you an invite. You know you're gonna be fine on the next Misfits card. So we of course want to hear from buddy. you. We also that one's gonna be a fun one, man. The Rock Wait. Man. Wait, October fifteenth. Slim... Talk to him. Wait, Slim. <laughs> Finally going to get his respect, finally. Yeah, man, fair play to Slim. Listen, I- I'll say this. I've been listening for a bit, man. The, the one thing I want to say, and I know the big controversy on the night is the Kenny and Sensei fight. I- I'm so fed up with people, like, trying to drive Kenny into the dirt for it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not Kenny his fault. Yeah. He Kenny even fought. said he, yeah. even said he t- thought it was a draw. So, yeah. It's like- fair, he, regardless if he said whatever, you know, if he, if he took his belt and, and held it up on top of the fucking Empire State Building, I, I understand that. The judging was whack, and and I'll have to go back and exactly break down what I thought happened where. And yes, of course, I thought my boy Sensei pulled that, but it doesn't yeah. matter. It's not Kenny's fault that any of that happened. Kenny worked his ass off, and I saw some of these videos behind the scenes of, of some of the things that Kenny was doing and how much he was really going through. And no, nobody deserves any kind of hate over going out and just tr- like putting it all out there. Everybody else on that card, maybe outside of Saul Poppy and KSI, K. Like, since they hits them with that right hand and that left hook, and they go to the fucking sleep. You know what I mean? So, like, to be able to survive that first round and then continue to fight and win rounds, all you get, like, I don't know how you can't respect Kenny at this point. You well, that's what, what I, that's what I said earlier um, on this show is that it's unfair to Sensei. The judging was like something's fucked exactly. up. Right? I, no, I agree. But you you want to put it, it somewhere, put it on the judging. You know what I mean? It's well, also unfair to Kenny because now he yeah. has to deal with exactly. all the shit again. Dude, exactly. if Kenny would have got the L today and Sensei would have got the belt, right? It would have been so much respect and love to Kenny for just having this fight and surviving Sensei. But here's but the thing now too. It's, we're now not, it's this other exactly. shit. We're not, we're not also taking into account, and again, I need to watch it again just to just to make sure I'm 100 percent on exactly what happened with each exchange, because when you watch it this first time, especially when I got to barely see the second and third rounds, I want to watch Kenny's jab again. And I, and I want to watch what he was doing, because since a, you know, I love my brother to death, but there were times where he, he got inactive, you know, and, and if that swayed things and. You know, it is what it is, but there was times where, where Kenny was just taking control of center and not moving and pumping his jab. And activity over moments is, is kind of what you saw with the judging here. And, uh, again, I don't agree with it, but I want to go back and watch it. But, like I said, the, respect to both guys, man. Like that, at the very best, and if you're you're really trying to help King Kenny out, it was a draw. At the very best, the fact that he walks away with a win is just impossible. Yeah, well, like I, said, I, I don't, I, I have to, I don't agree with what what the judging was, but it just frustrates me watching the internet just go after a guy that had nothing but respect for Sensei and came in and put every single thing into it. That bothers me so much. Man. 
you know shit as well. I brought I brought this up before, uh, but like as Kenny was running as Kenny was running away from like you know with the belt, his fucking fans who were cheering him momentarily beforehand all started fucking booing him off stage. It was depressing. It's garbage, man. It's flat out garbage to see that because it's like Kenny is the one guy that has done nothing wrong here. Like nothing wrong other than go in and put his heart and soul into something. And I think he deserves his moment, man. Like I, maybe, okay, maybe it wasn't the right, the right, whatever, but to take away from him, like, again, just putting the work into doing something. I just, I don't get it. But Kenny, you know. Kenny handled it very well. You know, yeah. about that tweet saying, look, another one's going to be overturned uh, and good on him for that. He's handling it way better than the first time. Uh, that's for sure. Um, and, you know, it is really rare to have these things overturned. Like, it's extremely rare, but we had one overturned with Gibb. We had one overturned with Kenny and Temper. And what are the chances that we're going to get three overturned in this space? Well, I have a question. Do you guys think we get Faith Sensei versus King Kenny too? I think Absolutely. A thousand percent. It, yeah. It'll, I mean, King will know better than I will, obviously being, you know, with Happy Punch, but it's going to depend on what sensei wants to do. Right. I don't know if he's going to want to do this again, but if he wants to for sure, run it back, you know, absolutely. But Oh yeah. There's, there's some great fights for Kenny out there. If sensei goes, you know, shoot the slim fights there. And and by the way, let's, let's JMX. JMX. Yeah. I mean, JMX maybe, but you know, the, the weight classes would be similar with him and slim. Right. And now there's two belts on the line. The belts are definitely a thing now, you know, but I'll say this, like, again, you put Kenny with anybody else on the card, not named KSI or, or you know somebody else, and pff, Kenny comes out with it with a starlight performance. You know what I mean? So, Saul Poppy Man. wants that smoke. Yeah. Oh, there's Kenny, another one. There's Kenny another one. Right? Saul Poppy wants you. He wants Sensei though too. <laughs> I know that's the thing. Saul Poppy wants everybody. Nah, man. Like I said, <laughs> it was Jake Paul. Yeah, right. He wants Jake. He wants he wants KSI. Yeah, no, Saul probably had a great performance, man. I mean, let's be honest. I think we all knew that Andy wasn't going to last very long in that fight. That's not that's not what impresses me about Saul Poppy. It wasn't that he beat Andy in the way, even in the way he did. It's the way he moves. It's the shots he throws. It's the selection. It's the patience. Guy's a superstar, man. I'm proud of uh, I'm proud of Sam Hyde as well because like I, I honestly I didn't think he like his jokes like I didn't think anyone was gonna understand him and stuff like that but it, the, everyone loved it they were all laughing it was just it was a big I think mean, got the W as well got the W yeah I mean Sam Hyde if we don't see him in the boxing ring again that's fine but we should see him in like a WWE or a wew or something uh he is so good at this it, it, not as far as you know boxing or whatever which you know he came out on top but just as being an entertainer in this in this fight space he's brilliant yeah he i can see him fitting in at aew i can see him being over there well we have to move on to the next misfits and we have the main event i seen uh the rock on, man on- baby <laughs> what's your thought on this whole uh, event yo 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 what's up y'all man it was a great event tonight i had a great time i was enjoying the undercard i agree with a lot of the stuff y'all saying here i, agree, I disagree with a little bit um i thought sensei won the fight against kenny um I, I don't i don't i can't fathom how um the fight went like this it was four rounds he got a ten much eight. dropped he got a 10 8 round in the first round. So, how do you score mm-hmm. 39 points if you got a 10 8 round? And then, um, I feel like he came out, he won the second round. Um, I felt like he lost the third round. He got hurt in a in a in an inactive round between both fighters. He was the one that got hurt and and kind of almost saved. You thought the referee was going to come in and give him an eight count, and then you know, he he kind of held on and, and and stopped that from happening. He neutralized the attack, but. Still, he was the one hurt on wobbly legs, and then you go to the fourth, the fourth round, well was like, like almost a toss up round. So, even if you give him the second round and the fourth round, there's no way you can give him the third, there's no way you can give him the first. That's that's not a uh, that's three. Someone asked me who I thought won, and I said it's, it's three rounds to two. That was three rounds to two win for him for uh, since to me, that's just me. Just watching being a fan of the sport and scoring in my head, it's a four round fight, it's not that hard to score. Um, I, I thought uh, the fight of the night was slim. 
I thought Slim, you know, coming in as an underdog, two weeks notice, talking the way he talked, he came and walked the walk. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I think he was definitely uh, the 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 the, who, the person who stole the show tonight. Um, I think uh, KSI deserves a lot of props for what he did. I don't care if you fought a, 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 a rapper and a and a and a and a, and a not so good boxer. He at the end of the day. We've seen something in boxing that we do not see. We've seen a packed house in the vet for the first fight. The, 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 there was 20,000 people there for the first fight, and they all sat their asses in their seats. Nobody left early. Everybody was there for the entire car. That, that's, that's so much exposure for everybody on the undercard. Whereas if you look at, 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 at boxing nowadays and boxing really coming up, the undercard fights, even all the way up until like the co main event, it be empty in the arena. Now, KSI flipped Back. the script on the whole, he flipped the script on the whole boxing world. This, 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 the arena was jam packed from the beginning. They had to delay it because they, there was a, there, I don't know if y'all noticed, but there was a 20 minute delay on the TV time because they couldn't get everybody in the door. Everybody was, there was still a lot of people outside, so they couldn't start the show. When there's when there's still two thousand people that still need to be let in, so um, I think it was a great thing for for boxing. I think this is a great step forward, and um, the, leading up to Misfits two, man, I think that that set the bar really high. But um, we got Misfits two, we got boxing versus UFC, or boxing versus MMA. This is gonna be um something that's great again for the sport, and I look to represent boxing in a in, a, in an amazing way. And go ahead and get this done. You know, you bring up a great point. I think moving forward, the co-main event opens the night. Opens the night. Every Misfit boxing event, the co-main event opens the night. Or something. Or somebody's got to fight two people. (laughs) But that's the way it has to be because tonight was sick. I'm actually going to ask them. There's this guy. He's been tweeting me. I don't know. His name is like Miss Minikin. Minikon. Minicon, Minicon. Yeah, Minicon. So, oh yeah. no! <laughs> so I want to see if I can fight him and Vitor Belfort in the same night. I'm gonna see if they can make that happen because um, if things go the way I, I, I think I would, I would stop him to open the show and then go ahead and have a real fight with Vitor later on in the night. So I, I, I would definitely like to do that. I'm gonna see, let's see if we can make that happen. Well, Minicon can throw, <laughs> um, but yeah, you're probably gonna get the best of him easy. I mean, I don't even know if he could. I don't know. From what I've seen, he looks like very novice. So he ain't going to be in there with me long if you do get in there. Well, let's talk about your fight. Uh, you find a USC legend, Vitor Belfort. How did this fight come about? It was just offered to me. <laughs> I don't know who picked it. I don't know who made the matchup, but they did a great job. Um, I've I, I seen them fight Holyfield. I watched that fight live. I watched them on uh, YouTube. So, you know, um, I, 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 I haven't been, you know, an avid Vita Belfort fan. I haven't, I, I knew who he was. I knew the name, but, um, I didn't, I, I wasn't aware of all his accomplishments until, until the fight, uh, got made, but I'm definitely on point. I know he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, a legend in the, in the, in the, in the UFC realm, but this is boxing and we will have drug testing that is, that will be a part of the fight. So. I'm looking forward to um, a clean, healthy, uh, you know, a uh, uh, nice, 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 good battle with the with the champion. And he's well, he's not gonna be. This is not gonna be a, a easy fight or something that, um, like a walkthrough. This is gonna be a tough fight, man. Every MMA guy that I've that I've ever worked with in the gym has been tough. They've been fucking tough. Um, now all of them have gotten put on their ass pretty much all of them i say like 85 percent 90 percent of them have got knocked down or stopped or or you know they had to stop the boxing but uh i i think that you know vitor is a very credible opponent i think he's 10 times the fight that jake paul was and um jake paul wouldn't fight vita belford so this is just showing the world that you know who's really scared of the smoke and who really wants to smoke I have a question about the potential, uh, you know, main event with the with, with the history that um, all these YouTube box events, pullouts, cancel. 
Do you guys have a potential backup for V Torque? Again, drug testing is going to be fine. I'm thinking and, and, that it's 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 got to be the. I for, keep forgetting well, who did I just say? Minicon. Yeah, I'm thinking he's probably the backup, but I want him first, and then I'll fight Vitor Vitor at the end of the night. That would be. I mean, I mean, that's what I want. I mean, hey, if if Minicon sips it and he gets the bag, hey, I, I'll watch it. I will too. And Hasim, please destroy uh, Vitor Belfort for uh, Evander Holyfield. My G. Oh yeah, we got to get that back. We definitely got to get that back. I didn't like the way he was acting after that fight. Yeah, that was so, fucked up. Yeah, so we for sure got to get that back. I got a tremendous amount of respect for Holyfield, and um, hopefully, uh, this brings light for my brother to be able to fight Holyfield's son. So we'll see what's going on. I have, Ooh, I have one more thing. I seen um, again. So you find Vitor, who's a big name. Do you think fighting on the main event on Big Stage, do you think this will have you one step closer to the Videl Rally fight? Do you still want the fight going a different direction? Well, I would like if you follow me, that'd be cool. That'd be a good that'd be a good start. But um <laughs> the Videl Rally fight is 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 really like something that was made up on the internet. I I I replaced with the Videl Rally for a fight. I was the, the fight was at two ten. Um, there was never any talks or any offer for me to fight with Del Riley. It's just something that people want to see. I compete at Bridgeway, um, as I've been saying. Um, so, Vidal Riley, he competes exclusively at Cruiserweight. So, unless we can find a catchweight or, um, or, or, or I wind up actually going down or he winds up coming up, I don't think Vidal's anywhere in the near, in the near future. It's just, it's just, just we, we're in different weight classes. And the money isn't there for us to, uh, to, for either one of us to move. Social Waffle, got a question for our scene? Uh, no, I don't have a question. I already said my piece. I just want him to destroy Vitor Belfort. <laughs> got you, got you, got you. Yeah, he's okay. really disrespect of Holyfield. Honestly, I, I, I hope he's a little bastard. Go and batter him for me, please. Got you. I seen, no doubt. I seen, um, yeah, let's just talk about the Slim fight, man. Like, two weeks notice. If and Again, people forget it was supposed to be Blueface versus Temper. And, I, you know, Blueface, of course, got pulled off the, the car and then Slim uh, stepped in. Slim, you know, earlier this summer, he was scheduled to fight Ron, Ron Taylor. He got jumped. His eye got all fucked up. And when he was announced, I was like, I don't know if Slim's 100% healthy. That was my thing. It wasn't because of skill. Cause I'm like, well, Slim had three fights. He, The eye looked good to me. He went in. He had strategy. What was like stick, uh, you know, hit temper, grab him, and he did it repeatedly. And I think temper didn't know like what to do. Like he was frustrated. What, what was your? Uh, did you think Sim was gonna win coming in? Was you surprised of the brutal knockout? Um, yeah, I, I had actually did. I did pick Sim to win, but you know, I wasn't going off of much uh, my, my, that I knew much about these guys. Um. He, he he just he stayed more calm. Uh, you know, FaZe was trying to be calm and trying to have himself collected, but FaZe was more calm and um uh every time they would clinch, every time they would clinch, uh uh uh, uh, uh Slim would come up swinging and uh FaZe would still be looking to hold on, so it was only a matter of time before he got clipped. And that's the one thing I really like about YouTube boxing. Because Slim was the most disrespected. Everybody clamored, oh, you haven't fought nobody, wherever. Temper coming to this week, like, Temper said, oh, I'm fighting KSI. That was a possibility. Slim comes in, have a brutal knockout, has everybody respects. KSI even says, yo, I might even fight Slim. You can tell anybody in this chat one year ago, oh, yeah, Slim might fight KSI. That might right. be on the table. Like, like it's, it's, and again, that's one thing in boxing. As you know, box, one win in boxing can change your whole life. True, Absolutely. right, bro. And let's just say, Abu Face, Abu Face, Abu Face, Abu Face. And on your co main event, uh, Jake Swindler, he's making his long uh, return. I'm not gonna lie, on no idea who that, no idea who that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he's on Gib on the Logan versus KSI fight, you lost, but 
he put up quite a good fight against Gibb, who obviously when you see what he's become now, he's a beast. So let's see if Jay can become such a beast that, like Gibb has. Yeah. Was it was that a question for me? No, he, uh, he, he was, was just... playing. He was playing who James oh, okay. is. Yeah, James Swingler, he fought uh, Gibb on the undercard of K-Side versus Logan One back in 2019. That's the last time he has fought. So, Swingler, huge fan base in the UK. Um, he'll, trust me, when, if you guys do a press conference and he's beside you, you'll know he's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bet, bet, bet. Bet. Um, oh, yeah. I've seen, I don't even notice, but you're fighting. Again, you're on the UK time. You're fighting the same day as Wires Return and David Haney. Yep. Same day. But yep. what's good but what's good is you guys aren't clashing because you K, so you'll be on Yeah, I'll be you know, I'll, I'll go person. first. I'll be the first of the day because obviously oh well I am not sure. I don't know if, if Devin will be first. Because he's gonna be no. in Australia. It, it, it's Australia, but it'll be on primetime US. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll be fighting on primetime UK time, so <laughs> It'll be around yep. the same time as today. Gotcha. And again, since you're here, man, David Haney, down to a while, he makes a return. What's your thoughts on those two big boxing events? Um, I think, you know, uh, Devin Haney is going to have an easy, easier time with Cambosis than he did the first time. He downloaded a lot of information in that first fight, and I don't think there's much more in Cambosis' uh, arsenal that he could bring out and show Devin. So I think that's a that's a cakewalk for Devin. And then um Wilder's in a tough fight. Wilder's in a tough fight, but he's Deontay Wilder, man. It only takes one second. It only takes one second and for him to get that knockout. So I would I would definitely pick him by knockout. But you cannot sleep on Robert Hellenius, man. He has been um he just beat Kawanaki twice and then he beat Yes. He beat somebody else. I forgot who else he beat, but he's He's not to be. He's not to be slept on, man. So it's not an easy exactly. fight. Exactly. Not an easy and, fight. And what I really want to see is again, Waffle. I'll, I'll let you come after this. The one thing for Wilder, he's fought Tyson Fury twice. In those two fights, he three took times. a lot. Oh, oh, I know. I'm, but like my, my point is, the last two times, back to back, he took a lot of damage. So yeah, I want to see. I, I want to see how. Especially the third fight, man. That was brutal. That, to me, that's one of my favorite heavyweight boxing of all time. But go back, that fight was for Tyson and Wilder, but especially for for Wilder. So I want to see how he bounces back. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. And do you think with this win, David Haney he'll find me on a pound for pound, or do you think they're gonna leave him off again? I think Devin was on the pound for pound list, and then he tweeted and said that he wanted them to take him off, and then they took him off. I don't know if they're gonna put him <laughs> back on. I think yeah. he requested he requested to be removed from the pound for pound list, so I, I, I'm not sure if they're going to even put him back on there. But he's clearly a pound for pound fighter. One more thing, since Miss Fish, you're on the main event, would you have your uncle on? Would you have your brother fighting on the event? I mean, yeah, but that's not up to me. <laughs> that's gotcha. not up to me. That's up to you know the managers, the promoters, all the people that you know have, have something to do with the show. Yeah. I, I, I can't literally put them on the show. If I could, they'd be on every show I fight on. I mean, of course, I'm help my brother. I want for my brother what I want for myself. So, of course, I, I I would look to get my uncle, my brother, and my father all on the same card if it was up to me. Okay, and since you're here, man, Jake already tweeted his he's gonna announce his opponent next week. Any guesses on who his opponent is? Um. From what I'm hearing is that Canadian guy that's like thirteen and one or um It's Jan Pillarin, right? I think that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy. And but but then Jake said that he's he's for sure gonna be the underdog, so that might not be it. I mean you he won't be you, under- I, I, I saw another rumor it was a Julio. You, you think you might fight him? That's what I heard too. Oh if he heard if he fights Julio Chavez then he gets a lot more credit. But um, uh, I don't I don't know if he can beat Julio Cesar Chavez. I don't know, and it, and it and it also depends on which Chavez shows up. Great point. And, at 185, is he going to be the the Chavez that he was at 168? Uh, you know, I, it's hard to tell. 
but he, it won't take the Chavez that was at 168 to beat Jake Paul. It would just literally take a, a 70, 80% of the Chavez that we've seen to get the victory over Paul. Gotcha, man. Um, I guess I had my guy on speaker. He's been asking, Miss Busy, what's good, man? What's up? What's uh, up? Well, well, he just left. Never, never mind, then. Oh, uh, come I was going to let, let him speak. Yeah, um, but guys, I gotta wrap this up. I seem thank you for coming on. Thank you for everybody. Who no problem. Thank right. you. Thank you. Make sure you follow me back too. Happy punch. Oh, oh th- th- this is Fight Lounge, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, fight. Well, whoever yeah. it is, Fight Lounge, whoever it is, make sure y'all hit that follow. Gotcha. And, and, hey, man, since you're going to shout out your, your socials so they can follow you. Man, right here on Twitter. Um, please hit that subscribe on my YouTube. It's in my bio, and then Instagram is. The same thing without an underscore. It's just my name. Just make sure y'all tap in, tap the follow, subscribe to the YouTube. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. And again, and man, uh, tell him the date, the place where you. We, oh, well, never mind. He left as well. <laughs> I was gonna let him get out his, <laughs> his date, look, you know, the date, location, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here, Yo, I'll do guys. it for him in there Sheffield. Uh, Misfits Boxing to zero zero two in Sheffield. He's gonna be fighting Vitor Belfort and. Uh, Jay Swinger is going to be fighting Turtles in the co-main event. There you go, Hazim. I got you. <laughs> hey, the zone cut. The zone cut. Uh, Waffle Taco. I check. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna and get me to fight one, Sam Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good yeah. Um. Again, Waffle. Thank you. I know a lot of people want to join, but you know, I, I think there's a limit. I think you can only have like 12 people total. So you know, if people want to, apologize. Um, I'll probably do another one of these either Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I'm about to work tomorrow, so I'm doing another tour space Tuesday, or Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna see. I want the fighters who won. I'm gonna try to interview, interview them. But again, shout out to everybody. If you're here, I, if you don't know, I am Fight Lounge on IG and Twitter. So go ahead and follow me on there. Keep up to date with, of course, YouTube boxing, but UFC, Bellator, and of course, you know, pro boxing as well. Um, this was a Great event. Um, Slim finally got their respect that he deserves. Hey, this is YouTube Boston season. There you go. This is YouTube Boston season, people. Next week, Drake is going to announce his opponent. Cross our fingers. Social Gloves 2 actually happens. We got Gibb versus Austin Broom. We just saw how much more important that event is. If Gibb wins, maybe it's Gibb versus KSI. Maybe it's Gibb versus Slim. Maybe it's Gibb versus King Kenny. You know, if Austin Broom wins, boom, everyone wants, you know, KSI versus Austin. That fight is important. Um, and then we got the Misfits cards in October. And Craig Lodge 2, which will be in April next year. There's, there's some names rumored to be on that. Don't forget about uh, Misfits in uh, either December or January. Yep. Oh, yep, there, yep. No, no, I, I didn't mention uh, December or January, but you're yeah. right, like, this is YouTube on season when it's one after another. And, you know, again, I said this earlier, to me, when I watch Cray Clash, I can watch the event from beginning to end, no skips. I don't have to skip fights. This one, there's about three, if not four or five, I'm going to skip, you know. So, but both are right. great in their own right. Um, but, yeah, th- this, put it this way, this is 10 times better than show star. You know, if anybody had any doubt. Oh, yeah. 100%. 10 times better. Absolutely. Yeah. We had our lows with Showstar. That was the lowest we can get. And then we, Rex. and then we're on the, we're on the table. We're about to, YouTube boxing was about to die, but then Creator Clash came in, gave us a bit of oxygen. And then we got, we got completely rehydrated and refocused, re everything once Misfits came around. We are back. <laughs> we're back, ladies and gentlemen. And we're only going to go up from here. It, exactly, man. It, it's, again, YouTube boxing season. So many events is going to uh, become our future. So, again, make sure you follow me, Fight Lounge, but also Heavy Punch. Heavy Punch. Of course, we have fighters, as you guys saw. We also a media company as well, so we won't keep you up to date. Um, I believe, I believe that's it. Oh, yeah. If you, again, this is the tour space, but I will upload this entire space on my YouTube channel. So if you just saw towards the end, towards the middle of this space, I'm going to upload the whole thing so you can hear everything. Again, shout out to KSI. 
he did what he had to do. It was it was his night. Case on his back, you know. Boom. His next opponent will be um, a much tougher opponent. If they can make the Tommy Fury fight, that's the fight to make. That's, that would be that's so huge. Big. Yeah, and I know people like want the the Tate fight, but again, does the only want to take a chance with Andrew Tate? Uh, we'll say as of right now in August, no. But let's say my November, December, when he kind of you know wells down on on him, we'll see. But if they can make Tommy versus KSI, that's the thing to to do. Saw Poppy, he's the real deal. He he stole the show once. He stole the show and show star in a Misfits. Dean, you know, Dean of Great. I want to see him. Um, I guess Lil Cray Cray, Lil Cray Cray, whatever you pronounce it, or uh, Wally Sharks, Wally Sharks who fought uh, Adam Sala. I think those will be two great opponents, and it will be the best technical YouTube boxing match ever. If agreed, Dean, agreed. If Dean, if Dean fought either one of those guys, Deji's back. Man, the, the Deji's back. He looked great. You know, if he wants to fight Bryce Hall, go ahead. My opinion, I think it's an easy dub. But hey, it's a big fight, big name. You want. To be on a resume, um, the, maybe the promotion oh, for that fight. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. If you guys, if you guys remember, 2020, Gibbs said he wanted to do the YouTube Rumble, and who did you call out? Deji. Who, if 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 Gib beats Austin Broom, and he doesn't fight Slim for a reason, why not Deji versus Gib? And that'd be that'd be decent. That'd yeah, be really decent. Good. Yeah. So th- th- that's what the again. With with this event, I pay my money. I was entertained, and it you know I get my my money's worth and more. Looking forward to rest. Looking forward to social gloves if it happens. Looking forward to a curry clash, and yeah, this is just the uh, you know the start of many many things. So again, uh, thank you for all the people who listened. Thank you to everybody who stopped by. I know Kim and Wade are spent. They did a literally. You know, a foolish like what eight hours, whatever, just talking. So I know they're spent. They took time out. Um, so yeah, so I'm about to wrap this up. And yeah, again, I'm Fight Lounge on IG and Twitter. And see you guys next time. Peace out. Have a good one, Fight Lounge. Peace. Abu face. <laughs>